audio on there we go and we are back how's everybody doing back from the break hey, hey. we have Ib, successfully you, you... stuffed faces and updated characters Gabe, do you mean oh. to have dynamic lighting on for this one? Yeah, totally. We okay. got all our characters leveled. <clears throat> all right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Before we get going, Jacob, do we have a winner? Uh, we do indeed for our next giveaway of Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Uh, our highest donator over the last session and break was Lonnie. Uh, Lonnie, we will reach out to you through the, uh, the thank you on the extra life page and, uh, get email addresses and such to get the rest of that figured out, uh, in due time, probably sometime tomorrow. I know you had mentioned in your message that you, uh, were having to head out from the stream before long, so you may not be hearing this right now, but thank you so much for your contribution. Uh, it is incredibly generous of you and we look forward to sending you uh your copy of the book and hopefully it will go to good use um so with that said uh we start as of right now the uh tallies for the next drawing so whoever donates between now and the end of next session uh break uh will be entered or the largest donator uh will get yet another copy of tasha's cauldron of everything uh, I believe we also have a few other giveaways that are going to be happening during this stream. So stick around with us here. Uh, some fun things from what was the, the map maker's name? Uh, heroic, heroic, heroic maps. Heroic maps. Yes. Uh, so, fantastic from... map maker uh, draws all the maps themselves. Um, one of my go-to map designers. Well, there is one map from Heroic Maps that will be featured on this stream. And as soon as I see the comments from Crun coming in on the stream and I'm trying to block them out, uh, as soon as that map pops up, I will make an announcement. And uh, once I do, it'll be the very first person who can post two. in the stream. Top two people. That... We have two codes oh, in each map. The, so top two people two, that respond. The top two people that respond in the stream that they would like a copy of it. We will uh, get with you. Jacob will get with you after the stream, and he'll acknowledge that it happened and uh, uh, get with you after the stream to get you a URL to where you can download that map for free from, Bill, is it RPG drive through uh, drive through RPG, yes. Awesome. Um, there will be codes for free copies of the map. There will be a map we're giving away in yours. There will be a map we're giving away in mine. Um, also, during your break, um, your break, bio break whenever we take it we will be doing the raffle correct yep, is yep. correct so there will be a whole heroic maps bundle so a whole bunch of digital maps you can use for your tabletop rpgs uh especially now that we're all like hiding from the germs and whatnot and and living in our basements like we were, when people. We were kids <laughs> and Just... people yeah uh, uh since we're in this socially isolated time and playing rpgs online instead of in person and together there will be a whole bundle for you to be able to use in your tabletop rpgs or digital tabletops if you happen to have a computer or a tv that faces up like i know some players do so and the these will be all vtt maps they're drag and drop ready to use with um um virtual tabletops so yeah yeah uh, you can use them on, on any of the programs out there. Uh, they're awesome. They're wonderful. Like I said, there's one of them in this map, in this section, and there's another one in Bill's session later on tonight. But for now, and as when, we bring up... When we get to the raffle, I will explain how all that's going to work. That will happen through the Twitch stream itself. Uh, we'll just require you all to do a few things to enter yourselves in the raffle so that you can get drawn for it. So that will be a random drawing. will not be based on donations or anything along those lines. All you got to do is be here. So... Stick with us. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, thank you for stream tuning into our goofy, obnoxious magic item eating stream. And uh, bringing us to the end of our session in the Tower of Terrible Shinies. Derek, would you yes. like to f kick us through this portal? Sure. So uh, last session, uh, our heroes, uh, they're still they're on their quest to rescue the kidnapped uh, goblin and Joey children from uh, from our 
uh, town of of uh, I'm sorry, what was the Wise Ones? Where the 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 tribe of the Wise Ones. Uh, so on our quest, we stopped by uh, the Tower of Terrible Shinies to find the wizard Harlan Sanders II. Um, we found him at the top of the tower, and he graciously agreed to teleport us to the next destination, which is uh, the peak of uh, the Shearing, uh, the peak the of the Shearing, shearing Peak. peak. <laughs> uh, so um, we are currently in the wizard's parlor, and he is gifting uh, our characters with um, a few items. So. He kind of, uh, he's monologuing at this point. He's like, my father uh, was doing all sorts of research up in this tower. He was uh, researching all the, the herbs and spices, and he studied he studied 11 of them very extensively. And then that's when things went wrong. And he, st he, he started looking into the 12th herb, and it made him go crazy, and that's when he started all these awful uh, creations. But there were a couple of good things that did come out of it, and I've sorted through them. And this pile you see here is uh, there's some pretty good things in here now uh i've spoken to each of you and you've all told me what you're good at now i think i have some recommendations and i'll tell you what these items do and he goes up to dice and he says this this is the sword of mocking now you got to be careful with this son you hear me this uh the sword will protect you but as it protects you it's gonna it's gonna mock the people that are attacking you in your own voice uh, egging them on to to come after you well, I think this is perfect for me. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, now a, a young woman such as yourself uh, needs a nice walking stick to get around, and this this is the staff of utility. Now, this uh, staff will let you perform all kind all all, uh, all kinds of uh, things that might be useful along your journey. Uh, the alarm spell, speaking with animals, and it's got a nice uh, shillelagh spell in there too to to knock some sense into these this crew you have around you. And she whips it down on top of dice. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> can nice. I, um, as, as I see this is coming on, can I throw the sword up real quick? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> and have it protecting me? Sure, so the, the sword uh, uh, swats the, the stick away, and then what does it say? Um, oh, 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 crap. Um. If I've got a dog as ugly as you, I'd shave his butt and teach it to walk backwards. <laughs> <laughs> get, you'll get the hang of that, I'm sure. And he goes to, to Kron, and he's like, Now, son, I, I know you, you can't move right now, but I'm, I'm going to give this to you when you wake up. Uh, this is this is called the gauntlet of misplaced convictions, and it'll let you smite things like a paladin does. But uh, you can call on whatever powers you so desire at the time. I'm sure it'll work out just fine for you. And then it comes to Bud and Petunia. He's like, "Now, Bud, you seem like a fine chap, and uh, yeah. it's not that I have anything. It's not that I have anything against you, but I believe this piece of armor here will fit your companion here better." Am I right? <laughs> Uh, so this is a, it's basically a suit of armor. It has a saddle uh, crafted on top of it. Um, he's, and he does he does tell you that it is magical and it'll help protect Petunia. Um, he's like, I wouldn't have it any other way, Petunia. This is going to look fabulous on you. And he just runs over and just like starts fastening this studded leather armor onto her. Uh, and in the generosity of uh, the Mage Sanders, there, uh, his hat changes. Uh, <laughs> to reflect the generosity shown to him. Now, now that armor will also help you talk to her once a day. Now, I know you could probably already do that, but well, I can. But getting to do it again is even better. And Petuna just goes, "Oh wow!" <laughs> and finally, Max, you, 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 Max. I, I don't know what to say to you. Here, here is the here is this. He gives him a necklace, and he said, "This." is a necklace that my father crafted himself. It's called the Necklace of Kentucky Fried. Now you take those little beads off of there, you throw them at people, and it'll make them extra crispy. <laughs> <laughs> you take this, and I hope to never see you again. Don't you come back now. <laughs> please, please don't ever come back, any of you. Wait a minute, is that my spellbook? <laughs> And about, <laughs> about that time, the portal pulsing that he has created 
it signals that you are you are running out of time, heroes, and it is time to rush through. Max dives through. <laughs> <laughs> Grand Emmy is gonna just shuffle t- 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 right up to it and go in. Uh, Bud follows Petunia along as Petunia trots herself right along. Did you say there's a saddle on it so like Bud can ride Petunia? Yeah. Uh, so it, 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 as, as, checks as well. Awesome. Uh, so um, with that, uh, Bud will uh, sit astride his trusty steed and they will walk their way through the portal. Um, as I'm walking out, I see the wizard and Kern sitting there and I'm like, you know, if um, while we're gone, you want to make the big guy a rug? I got no problem. No problem <laughs> with that whatsoever. Um, you, do you need an assistant? Do, do you need, you know, I'm looking for a job. And the portal is pulsing faster <laughs> and faster and faster so and I'll, faster. We'll talk, we'll talk later. Uh, send me a bird, it's called a tweet. And I jump through. <laughs> <laughs> and in that moment, your vision flashes purple. <laughs> And you feel yourselves transported, a new sensation to many of you, across thousands of miles, or just a few, across the mountain range. And you find yourselves next to a gorgeous lake and a hamlet of trees off to your left and ahead of you, rising up like a monolith, ominous and exciting at the same time is the Shearing Peak. It is later in the evening, as your adventures have taken up the better part of the day. And you see, just around the lakeside, is a campfire. It's a little far away, a little hard to tell how many people may or may not be there. But the beginnings of your journey up the Shearing Peak to seek out the heart of Norton lies before you. Ah, uh, back home in the mountains at last. I don't know about the rest of y'all, yeah. but I could use a nap. Sharing peaks, eh? Well, I don't yeah. know what sheep has to do with any of this, but let's get going. And Grandammy, uh, the- go, go ahead and roll a, a history check for me, Grandammy. For the record, the six that I rolled in the chat is to determine how many beads I have on my necklace. So that's the full nine charges. Oh, that is a six. <laughs> okay. Grand Amy, it has been a long time. Grand Amy has passed her, her right of aging and her right of matronhood and her right of youth and her right of coming of age. It has been so long you can't remember. But you've been here before. There's another tribe here. You can't remember exactly, but they're on that mountain somewhere. Ah. Yes, I, I, I came up here, trekked up here once. Yes. There were some other goblins on the mountain up there. They didn't know how to, uh, you know, help deliver the whelp. So in my first days of uh, being a midwife, they called us from, from, the, from the mountain. And I went up and helped, delivered... Four whelps that winter. Four whole whelps. Goodness, Grammy, that's a busy winter. The wind picks up and blows through, and you can see that campfire in the distance kind of flicker with the wind. And as it moves and the fire rolls against the boulders that is up near, you see there are two figures sitting at the campfire, one slightly larger than the other. Difficult to tell beyond here. Hey, who goes there? Uh, what? What? Who? Who's out there? Who's? Who's out there? Uh, calm down. Calm yes. down. Uh, uh, please come. Come into the light. Grand Amy's gonna just step up. Petunia will follow just to behind into Grand Amy's right. Character here. 
as we see the first of our player character named NPCs uh, appear. Ahead of you at this campfire, there is a, a gnome, an older man, uh, wise and gray whiskers and gray crazy hair and the stereotypical Professor Tweed coat. Jodhpur is tucked into riding boots. There's a quiver laying on the, the stone next to him and a, a bow and a, a whip curled up on his hip. And then next to him is this orc dressed as a gentleman, vest, tie, sleeves rolled up, covered in tattoos all the way up and down and a valet cap on his head, tusks sticking out, one of them craggled and broken. Oh, um, come, come into the light, please. Uh, I can't see you very well. What are you talking about? You're an orc, aren't you? Uh, this is the gnome speaking. You're a gnome, uh, aren't you? Yeah, <laughs> this is, I'm older, see? It's, uh, please, come, come into the light. Uh, he, uh, he can't see much. It just, it, trust me, it's easier. Just come uh, on in. Yeah. Come on uh, in. Yeah. Uh, he come ain't on gonna up. hurt you. <laughs> Trust me, he couldn't hurt anything if he wanted to. Oh, I, I heard that! Uh, a very tired for... Petunia will trod her way into the camp, and as she sits down, a bud unaccustomed to riding on anything uh, tumbles off her back to the ground. Uh, oh, go, oh, go, oh, gosh! Um, right, and Jacob, if you don't mind zooming on in yep. to those player character tokens so people can see what they look like there uh can we brighten the page at all i know it's dark out uh in terms of we, thematics but it's a little hard to see on the stream we can thank you lovely there we are uh, i am the professor indy uh ananome it is pleasure to meet you indy ananome thank you uh, I am a great explorer. Wow, you're old. Looking at Grandammy. <laughs> oh, they're all pretty young. Hey, I'm older than all of them, at least. And Professor, please stop. Uh, my name's Dinguish. Dinguish Toothseeker. Uh, it's nice to meet you. Uh, please have have a seat here. We we got plenty of food. This idiot bought a ton. Uh, well, we are going on an expedition up the mountain, yes. So we need the the supplies. Uh, what, whatever, Professor, you're fine. <laughs> uh, taking a seat around a warm fire. Um, they seem trustworthy enough, and Petunia and Bud are quite tired. Dice. I need you to make a perception check, please. Dice Clay, I need you to make a perception check, please. He was I too, know the cat's uh, too, too distracted by the cat. <laughs> the cat's like, you're paying attention to me. Is that everyone or just Dice and Petunia? Just Dice in particular. Oh, Jesus. Quit hitting me. There we go. All right. So with the 12, you look across at this Professor Ananome. You're... You're not, nothing rings a bell there, but Dinguish, now the accent sticks out. And the tattoos stick out. Oh no. This looks like a man who's done some time. Mm. Hasn't done time with me, has he? <laughs> no immediate recognition. <laughs> and he doesn't seem to immediately recognize you either. Do I see any familiar tattoos of, like, Rikas? <laughs> you do, in fact. Mm. All up and down his arms. Mm. Uh, so, um, welcome. Uh, are you uh, just travelers in the mountain? Please, please, sit, sit. And he starts preparing a pot of, of tea and pulls out little little tin canteens to share and a portable, collapsible table comes out of his little backpack and sets down. The backpack is much smaller than you would think a, this big, collapsible table would come out of. 
You ask a lot of questions. Uh, well, if you're to share tea with someone, it is only customary to be pleasant, so... Pleasantries! <laughs> <laughs> yes, anyway... Uh, and he puts the kettle on the fire. What brings you to Shearing Peak? As I said, my companion and I are on an expedition. Can I insight check that? Absolutely. Now that um, he, he doesn't keep the best of company. Um, 16. 16. Seems pretty honest. Seems like he is on an expedition up the Shearing Peak for something. Well, we're, we're on an expedition up to Shearing Peak too. What are you looking for? Oh, fantastic! There, there are these lights that appear every so often at the peak, and and I've been commissioned to go up and and research them some for the local lord, and uh, perhaps bring back any any discoveries that we have made. The local lord. Yes, 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 yes. Right, and who might that be? Gabriel's mind's blinking. Aaron Clovis is the name of the Lord of Norton's Rest. That's right. I wanted to say Sharp, and that's a different game. <laughs> uh, it's a Baron. Baron by the name of Clovis. Yes, he's asked. I'm a famous explorer, you see, and and I'm. He's asked me to go up there and do some research about anything that may may possibly be up there, and and what may be causing this purple glow that we see at the mountaintop every few days. When you say the Baron's name, I spit. <laughs> uh see here uh so dinguish he's kind of leaning back he's got a flask that he pulled out of his vest and takes a sip of it and just kind of smiles and looks at you <laughs> chuckles a little bit professor ananome seems completely oblivious Well, we've come to Nor Norton's Rest as well. Or Norton's Heart of Norton. Something Norton. Well, the Norton's Rest is down, down the mountain, you see. There's the trail right over there. It'll take you down into the city, but they're not very nice folks there. With folks who aren't, well, they are folks. So, me uh, distinguish here, he had quite the time. Uh, coming with me here, but he's my faithful associate. And he reaches over to Pat Dinguish and just misses completely. Uh, he's my faithful associate, and and we've been on many a journeys together. Dinguish goes, eh, he pays all right. Yeah, um, Mr. Dinguish looks very familiar. Yeah, you you uh you sound familiar. You've been up uh you've been upstate. A uh, little, 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 little kingdom. Got a dungeon there named Rikers. Hey, <laughs> yeah, I heard of it. And realizing what he was saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My my goblin tribes from there, you know, because I'm a goblin. You get it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're one of those, uh, <laughs> one of those red scale types. Sure. Sure, friend. Yeah, yeah, my entire tribe's got a skin condition. <laughs> yeah, sure. How how did you get out? You uh did you do do your time do your bit or or did you find a way? I got out fast, let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best way, and he passed the flask. <clears throat> yeah, this is all I well and good. But we want to get to this mountain. Well, I wouldn't go up that mountain uh, tonight. Uh, you see, there are goblins about. Uh, you look like fine, upstanding little halflings, you. Uh, the, the goblins up that hill, up that mountain. And when he says that, goblins, eh? there's a moment of like, are you blind? And then as you look a little closer, you notice that his eyes are just a little milky. A little glassy. <clears throat> You're blind as a bat, aren't you? Oh, no, I can see you, young lady. <laughs> Just fine. 
just fine. I'm an expert marksman, actually. And he reaches back and pats Madeline here, and I've been through many a war. Graca is just, like, pulling her the sags and wrinkles in her skin, and young lady. Uh, yes, well, we gotta get rid uh, of this one. Tea, tea is on, if you wish. <clears throat> and he pours out cups what of tea for pat? everyone. <laughs> But uh, Bud his, just all of a sudden, bow. Bud just all of a sudden goes, "Ha! Pleasant teas. I get it." <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> finally, <laughs> you're the first one in a forever, ever that got that. That was dumb. That, that, <laughs> that one was awful. But he it literally it took until time. then for Bud to get. It. <laughs> he says it every time, every time. Grack anyway. Grack I, Greca turns to Bud and just says, like, slow turn. You can turn and face that way now. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Professor Ananome comes around and offers each of you a little, little, little cup of tea. Little, little, if you're familiar with uh, Middle Eastern uh, tea, little chai cups, little short shots of tea, so to say. Well, please, uh, drink up. Uh, you see him take a sip from one and then go refill it and then give it to someone else. Uh, please, drink up. Uh, there, there's plenty to go around. I brought quite a bit. <laughs> yes. I want uh, well, to sniff, sniff the tea and see if it, does it seem strange or in any it, way? It is nothing like you have brewed in the cave. You are used to at least two centipede carapaces going in your tea concoctions. Uh, you think, inside so, jokes for some of the other people listening. So I, I, have, I have an herbalism kit. Do you think I have those types of things? To make what you're used to or what to season, he's to season, Yeah, to season my own tea. Oh, no, I, don't, I don't want to make tea. I just want to season the tea he gave me with my have, own Absolutely. Okay, yeah, I do that then. And then I'll drink it. Yeah, well, uh, we also have a meal, if you wish. Uh, uh, Dinguish, uh, get get some of the food out of the bag, please. Uh, all right. Um, the orc stands up, and as he stands up, you realize he's a monster. He's jacked. Not just, like, a big dude, but... His shoulders are wider than you think he might be tall. Dude's yoked. And he reaches over and he can't touch his own back because of how swole he is at this point. He reaches in and starts pulling out these from this small little uh, backpack satchel, these little bundles wrapped in brown paper and begins handing you each one. All right. Uh, it tastes it's all right. Tips. It's good stuff. It's not raw or anything, so it could be better. But I was gonna say I yeah. like it raw. But <laughs> just yeah. Bud just kind of looks at it wistfully and goes, "Oh, I bet Crun really would have loved this. He loves eating stuff," and yeah. just <laughs> digs in. Remember that one time he ate the wand? <laughs> Seems like I, forever. I, I, wasn't, I, I wasn't there. You just guys just told me about it. it sounds really funny. Yeah, yeah so, keep rubbing it in, Max. Keep rubbing it in. I bet this this guy doesn't eat wands. You swear that it's like a freshly baked, uh, let's call it a Philly cheesesteak. Just delicious, juicy, a uh, little cheese on there. Far more fresh than what you guys are used to. Uh, having not raided a dairy farm in a long time. Cheese, normally we just slap some mold on it. Uh, well, nothing but the best for my friends, yes. Uh, well, uh, I'm going to get some sleep here. Uh, Dinguish, uh, your, your watch is up. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, I'm... I'm... Uh, good night. And he wanders over to his pack and pulls a bedroll out of it and unrolls it and grabs his bow and his quiver kind of brings them close as if you would see kind of a seasoned warrior keep their weapons close to them and in 30 seconds <laughs> and he's 
out like light. And it's just you all and Dinguish. And the wolves. And Rufio. <laughs> my, my dog's turn to bark. <laughs> so, so, uh, you going up the mountain, huh? Yeah, that's where we're going. <laughs> he oh, can't yeah. see too well, can he? <laughs> Blind, Blind is a bad, but he can still shoot with that thing for somehow. Hmm. <sighs> well, guess we're here together, everyone. Yeah, well, uh, you you can get some sleep if you want. I've uh, I I just got off my nap. He only travels for like six hours. And then we down for the day. So I've already slept. Uh, you're welcome to get some sleep if you want, but that, that's you know. nice. That's bank as ours. <laughs> you're telling me. <laughs> got that cush job once I got out. You know what I mean? Um, Bud, giving not a second thought to it, uh, will take the saddle and tack and whatnot off of Petunia. Um, Give her, give her some nice belly rubs that she enjoys so much, and both of them will curl up and just pass out without a second thought. <clears throat> that, that, that possum and that, that goblin. That ain't right, man. That just, that ain't right. <laughs> does, does, does he realize that that's a possum? I don't think yeah. she realizes he's a goblin. No joke, the possum's smarter. Yeah, sure. I believe you. I believe you. <laughs> anyway, yeah. I'm going to make a round. Help yourself. There's He pulls a few more pieces of food out and lays them out and then takes the satchel with him. I'm going to make some rounds. Uh, make yourselves at home. <clears throat> and he turns to walk away. Oh, this is going to have to go. I'm not going to make it through a whole session with this thing on. <laughs> I had to take mine off. Mine was hot, dude. <laughs> it's not so much the hot; it's the these pieces were like pushing in on the earbuds and is killing my ears. <clears throat> so, which that hat? Uh, those of you who uh, choose to take a bit of a nap right now, uh, you pass the night restfully with no interruption and achieve a long rest here beside the lake beneath the Shearing Peak. Then I'll, I'll attune to my sword and enjoy my new feet that I acquired <clears throat> from leveling up. Long rest and hit it. Uh, long rest for you, Derek. And as the morning comes to you see <clears throat> Dinguish stoking the fire, preparing uh, some fresh caught fish for breakfast. And Professor Ananome is still in bed. Hey. All right, Snots, wake up. Hi, Mama. Hmm? Uh, Bud and Petunia will. Why does this keep happening? Set to 16. <clears throat> Bud and Petunia get up. Petunia gives a good stretch. So, uh, you're heading up right away, huh? Uh, yeah, as soon as he wakes up. No, okay. Uh, I give it another five minutes or so. He'll be awake. I like clockwork, that one. Yeah, something like that. <clears throat> uh, but I'll start putting Petunia's armor back on. Well, well, maybe we should go ahead. That way, if we run into any of, uh, uh, kin folk, we can uh, perhaps talk to them before you get there. 
As fine by me. He, like I said, he moves slow. Not. Nah. All right. Brandon gets up. Let's go, he snots. They seem to be experiencing some technical issues with Derek and his webcams. So we're going to keep on moving. Uh, and hopefully he can get things sorted out. So, does everybody rise and follow Grand Amy Graca? Uh, yeah. Uh, Petunia re-armored, and uh, Bud and Petunia follow along directly. I uh, I walk by Dingus and put a clawed fist out and be like, Don't run into many, many people that do time together. Nah. <laughs> you stay good, little one. You, uh, yeah, goblin. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> and after a few, few moments of traveling away from the campfire, what you would guess would be about five minutes, you hear, Hey, Professor! Wake up! <laughs> as they recede into the distance. Well, they seemed awfully pleasant. Oh my yeah, goodness, I guess. <laughs> so. So, are there any, like, direct paths up the mountain that we're looking at, or are we just kind of trudging it uh, off-road? So, looking up the mountain, uh, there appears to be a literal wrong button. Cool. Hmm. Uh, there appears to be uh, a literal path that kind of winds its <clears throat> way slowly up the mountain. Doesn't look too treacherous, doesn't look too steep. But the wind bites in, as you can see, some of the branches of the scrub higher up swaying. You have a long journey ahead of you. <laughs> Grand to me, that's a long way up. Do you want to ride Petunia? Petunia just looks at uh, Grand to shaky legs there and just kind of goes, meow, meow, meow. Um, you know what? Yeah, get off that possum. And, uh, I... But, but Grand hops Demi down and, and, like, goes to help Grandemi up. Probably winds up just, like, shoved to the ground, used as a step stool. Uh, yep. <laughs> Tracks. And as you all continue up the hill, the, the morning sun rising in the distance, and the sounds of the wind and the trees and it's not a whole lot of wildlife in the area it's almost kind of odd there's a the odd little skimper of a squirrel in the brush or a bird but not nearly as much as you would expect in the wilds um i call out to grandmammy greca hey old g um was this like this your first trip up here? She just death stares you and she turns around in the saddle. Nah, eh, I'm going to try and remember if it was like this. Um, history <laughs> hey. check? Uh, yeah, uh, go ahead and roll with advantage. Okay, that is going to be a 12. Okay. No, actually, it was teeming with life. Uh, the decrease in wildlife is notable. No, something's changed. And you hear, you see her kind of something in the wind and the animals aren't here. I don't like this. And as... The lot of you 
and Petunia continue on up the hill. That kind of strange, silent, almost darker feeling begins to kick in again. All right. It's, it's unnerving and odd and and there's just this un unness your goblin minds even max as learned and and wise as you are there's this kind of strange other feeling the further up the mountain you go all right just not don't feel right pay attention pay attention everyone and Grandammy, you're... Wait, wait, I I remember this. And up ahead, there's a fork in the path. And to the left goes to the goblin camp. It's, it's only a few hundred meters away. And to the right continues on up the peak. Well, the goblin camp's that way. Go up the mountain this way, and I don't know what what to find. Should we talk to the goblins first? Uh, I'm sorry, I was having audio issues. Did we long rest? You did, yes. Sir. Yes. Okay, great, thank you. I smack Max, who's been asleep this whole time in one of Petunia's pouches. <laughs> 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 oh, it, it's getting kind of spooky up here. Maybe, maybe we should. They might know well, why things are weird. And as you were all standing here, and, uh, and the, the fork in the road near, you hear a skittering <laughs> of rocks tumbling up into the left, uh, high up the hill. And looking up, not seeing anything, any movement, except for a skittering of a few little pebbles coming down the hill. I hold my spellbook up. I don't like this. Grab up the new new beaten stick and uh, just kind of start in Petunia. All right, possum. Let's get ready. And she like, slowly heads that direction. <laughs> to Petunia, the battle possum. And you are heading towards a fork in the road. To the left will lead you to the goblin village, and to the right will lead you further up the hill. Well, might need to talk to these goblins to see if anything they know can be useful. And she turns to the left. Just like, yeah. Grand Amy's just <laughs> following <laughs> along with Petunia. Okay. So as a group, we're heading that way. And finding your way to the outskirts of the Goblin Cave. You've been here, Grandammy. It's familiar. It's been a while. It's been at least, I don't know, what, this many seasons? You, it's hard to remember after the first million. But ordinarily, at the entrance of all goblin caves, there would be a, a watch or a guard or something. There are spoils here, obviously. The, the wrecked wagons and, and broken lit bits and litter everywhere. Clearly, they've been successful and moved around. And... Gave but... a few of us loaded off the map. Well, you guys are dead. <laughs> Quick fix. There we go. Nice melon. Thank you. Ta -da. Right. Well, I'm going to get off of Petunia. And I'm going to say, Thanks, Possum. I'll take it from here. And she starts to move along. And as we head into this cavern, uh, the first two people to post in chat that they would like this map from Heroic Maps 
will get a free download of it from RPG Drive Through. So please post in the chat that you would like it, and uh, our fabulous uh, IT fella Jacob will ping you back. First two people that post, I want this map. Okay, so as Grand Amy Greca and Petunia and Bud continue forward, what are Dice and Max doing? Dice is uh, staying with Max, and he goes, hey, 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 Max, Max, what? you got to see something. See what? Uh, I don't I don't know. I don't know what happened in that tower, man, but I got some new powers. Oh, yeah, yeah, me too. What you got? Yeah, yeah whoa, whoa, what? What's, what's this? And I pull my hand out, and I shoot an Eldritch Blast into the distance. <laughs> <laughs> what was that i don't know that man that but... wasn't an element it wasn't earth fire wind or, or, or yeah earth wind or fire i, I don't i don't know yeah. man but i think it's gonna hurt a lot like on a scale of one to ten <laughs> <laughs> well, i've got i've got i've got this watch and then i uh I like rifle through my spell spell book like really fast, and I generate so much static electricity that I throw my hands out, and the electricity comes off of them. Mm-hmm. Grand Amy. That's kind of cool, I guess. <laughs> at which point, at which point, all of this racket that's going on, this spell, he says, she says, she says, keep it quiet, dummies. <laughs> checks out all right does anything uh, can i kind of just look around the general area does it does it anything does it look normal for a goblin layer <laughs> the absence of goblins the absence of animals the absence of just about anything there i mean there's loot here there's there's spoils from raids but guys i've got i've got that feeling that Crone talks about in his stomach when he eats something bad. It's, but I haven't eaten anything. Diarrhea. <laughs> no, no, not that one. The other one. Gas. <laughs> no, not that one. The other one. Five minutes later. <laughs> <laughs> so, Grand Amy, as you continue forward, the the first cavern off to uh, uh, house right here. Uh, you see down it, and there's a, a fire pit there. Uh, empty. Tents, and, and there's a, a crate that's been smashed. Something's wrong. Down. Nothing's here. So as Grand Dammy's going down this first cavern and searching around, what's everybody else doing? Um, take a look. How long does it look like it's been since, uh, since someone's been here? Go ahead and roll a survival check for me, Dice. Uh, seeing all the webs and such around, like what, um, they saw in the tower, Bud will immediately stop a moment and, uh, light one of his torches, uh, that worked so well to burn down webs last time and have that with him as he and Petunia move forward here a little bit. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's any specific, um, like, if anything looks overly That's webbed like or cocooned or anything of that nature. Uh, nothing cocooned, nothing new. Instead of like active spider webs so far, all you've seen are cobwebs. Uh, dice, what was the? 16. 16. All right. With a 16, looking around, there there should be more footprints. You know, you're used to like being able to get out of a tight spot, right? And part of that means avoiding the heavily trafficked areas and the, the main cave the main passage in and out of a cave should be heavily trafficked if it's a goblin tribe, but there's there's only 
two sets of tracks. Are there um, are there yeah. sp actual spiders in these webs, or are they just kind of devoid? Just cobwebs. Okay. Um, Grammy, um, not to break your heart, although that's a bonus. Um, <laughs> no one's been here in a while. Oh wow! I can't believe I, I can't believe I didn't realize that. It seems. The knowledge of the ages is coming out of your mouth. I can see there's no one here. Don't. <laughs> I didn't say no one's here. No one's been here a while, old lady. And as you well, continue well, down well. the cavern, more of the same. There's, there's, there's cobwebs everywhere. And as you approach the, the next bend, Grand Amy, uh, it is just a wall of cobwebs hanging from the ceiling, just kind of gently drifting. Yeah. Looking, at those, looking at those tents. Man, the goblins here knew how to live. <laughs> Look how plush those tents are. <laughs> yeah, fat load of good it did them. Guys, I've got I've got a bad feeling about this. I don't I don't want to be here anymore. I've had that feeling for the last six months of my life living with you guys. <laughs> Continuing in ahead of you, there is a, a large uh, uh, open faced tent uh, with supplies and, and cooking implements and, and a butcher's table inside of it. This red one with the the flap over the cover and crates all around some of the others and these clearly are not of goblin make they they were pretty successful at one point in their their raiding career and a big old cauldron where they would cook soup on a cold and dead fire and looking in the call looking in the cauldron there is a a liquid with a thick film of fat oil and mold on the top good thing crumbs not i was here. just gonna see if i to make the joke <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna be like oh it makes me think of my friend crone <laughs> but bud walks up to the pot and it looks like crumbs favorite M moldy grease <laughs> yeah pretty accurate uh, so yeah. who would like to helm the search for really rooting around and uh, seeing what we can find here? Um, <clears throat> I think I will probably... Well, wait a minute. I'm awful at investigating, so... Yeah, it's ever... probably going to be me. Um, okay. With as, who... as probably the only other one with... Um, a direct uh... with a wisdom stat <laughs> <laughs> at all sure or intelligence um, uh, Petunia would like to help Grandemi Graca with the search uh, sniffing about and such okay. with her keen senses uh, Grandemi Graca uh, explain to me what you're looking for explain to me what you're doing as you search around okay so having been here before um the memories are starting to come back of this cavern. There's only so many things about a cavern that you've spent a winter in, you know, so I Absolutely. feel that uh, I'm going to start remembering and um, I'm going to look. Uh, I'm going to look specifically for um, Signs of were they packing up to leave uh, before this desertion happened? Okay. So I'm trying to I'm trying to get the uh, I'm trying to deduce reason isn't the right word, but like some kind of like causes and feeling of why this happened. Was it sudden or was it gradual? Okay. Go ahead and make an investigation check with advantage for me. 
as Petunia okay. helps you sniffing around. That is a 14. Right. With a 14, as you search around, you're, you're over near that tent with the red, uh, the old wilted, worn red fabric over the top. And, and looking around and you see, well, that's the tools are here and, and up oh, there's a thing that was being cut and the, but there's a butcher's cleaver on the ground and a shoe. No evidence of other bodies. And then you look around, and there's some blood, but that's normal is the for a shoe empty. <laughs> the shoe is empty. Uh, no evidence of other bodies, but there or of bodies, but there are, there's some blood across the butcher's area. You don't really think much of it, but there's a lot more blood than maybe just this little sheep carcass would have yielded and then you start looking around and and there's you know an odd tool here that looks like it may have been dropped or a, a, a spear there a few arrows stuck in the ground mm. but no bodies okay. i'm gonna look towards the pot again Kind of. As soon as you look towards the pot, Bud is sitting there just taking a big old scoop out of the top and just dropping it into one of the pockets on his pouch. <laughs> this is not in a container, just in the pocket. Nope, just... Oh, God. <laughs> That's gross. <laughs> Crumb's gonna be so I'm going to try and find some type of ladle or spoon and like try and sift into it. I'm going to see if I can find bones or remnants of any kind of thing uh it, it's all just sludge at okay. this point okay sure and as as you are all searching around you hear noise back towards the entrance as if something else is in the cavern with you so I uh, hadn't really thought about it up to this point, but uh, using the torch to like hold it up aloft. I know most of us have dark vision, but like, uh, can we see the top of the cavern in here or? You can. Uh, it is a natural cavern and there are some uh, stalactites from the ceiling and uh, the cavern dips and raises and dips and raises. It is not a, not a smoothly carved cave by any means. It is naturally formed. There was a fight here. I don't like it. Would you say there was Something a fire happened. fight? No, there's no fight. No scorch marks around. <laughs> and about that time, around the corner, walks two goblins. And they're chatting back and forth. Hi. Um... <laughs> Talk to him, Grammy. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Bud what? instantly, like, spooks ducks behind the other side of the pot. As the goblins Nico and Bartleby, uh, for more named NPCs from our donors, uh, come in the cavern. Uh, what What do here? Uh, what, I'm going to looking for slinking off between these two tents. <laughs> we're looking for everybody. What? We wanted to know about what's further up the mountain. Where is everybody? Does, uh, Did something go wrong here? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> can I can I insight that? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I, I would like to do that as well. I rolled a ten, so I shrug. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I got even worse, so I'm okay. No, no, uh, abandoned. Uh, long, long time. Uh, mm, mm, no food. Uh, leave. <laughs> what are you doing here? There's food. There's, pl there's plenty of food left behind. Yeah. No, <laughs> not food. Gross. No, no, not this. You said there were supplies. Or is there no food in the supplies? Uh, everything in here is like wilted, molded, decayed, <clears throat> rotten. Just. 
Why beyond. Would, why would they leave all this behind? What, what happened here? Uh, the, the attack. Uh, the, the, the thing. Um, uh, a monster from the mountain. <laughs> You're not very bright, are you? I'm a monster? What kind of monster? Uh, yeah, uh, I had uh, uh, fangs and 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 walked on all fours and ears. How did two snots like you survive? It doesn't uh, really describe a lot. <laughs> uh, clever, <laughs> we're we're clever. <laughs> uh, tell me another one. And in fact, you and Dice here can regale me with tales of bridges you'd like to sell us. Uh, what? What? Why, why Don't think too hard about it. You'll hurt yourself. Uh, it's a uh, uh, cobalt. Mm. Mm. <laughs> you look. You look for monster or or others. <laughs> Looking for the others. Ah, uh, that's up. Oh, up dead. To up to mountain. <laughs> I roll an insight oh, check that there's die. something wrong with you guys. Uh, you're welcome to try. Okay. I have a feeling there's something wrong with them. Uh, that's Mad Max's. Okay. Hold on. Uh, Petunia would actually like to walk up straight That's to 16. them, mm. and uh, this large to a so, goblin. Uh, as as you get close, they both back up, like, eh, eh, mm, 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 what, uh, mm, mm, what is? Petunia mm. just gives a low, and then like points with her paw, just right there. So I got a 16 on insight, if that means anything. Okay. Um, uh, Jacob, I need you to roll a wisdom saving throw for me. A wisdom saving throw uh, for okay. Bud or Petunia? <clears throat> Petunia. Okay. In fact. Let's see be another plus two over that which is still going to be white hot garbage uh so that's an eight okay so as you point meow, like trying to be intimidating uh nico kind of like half lunges at you ah, 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 and uh it startles you and you are are a little a uh, little intimidated mm. But she doesn't take another step forward. Uh, just from where Dice. she is, rather than going any further, though, uh, she would like to give a sniff, see if they smell like normal goblins, or if something okay. seems odd. Okay, come back to you. Uh, feel free to roll. Dice. Uh, I'll come to you yep. next, Brandon. Uh, your insight check was a 16. Um, with that 16, they're speaking in common okay not in goblin you not can no... understand you can understand yeah. that why would they know to speak in goblin or in common petunia there is a faint smell of fire on them Grand Amy. While they're acting all weird, I'm going to cast Detect Magic on their area. Okay. Uh, as you cast Detect Magic, um, uh, they both faintly glow a magical aura. Um, and as you do, um that eh, wrong button uh 
Um, as you do, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw, please. Okay. Let's see. That is a 14. Okay. Uh, you feel the gaze of Bartleby just kind of filter into your mind just for a moment as if this is the most charming goblin you've ever met and then you shake it off for a moment. <clears throat> and they both, they look at each other <sighs> and start backing up. Yeah, you're, as, you're not not nice. Not, as, not nice. As <sighs> as this happens, uh, Petunia just gives a, a <clears throat> like backs up and Bud will pop out. Petunia doesn't like you! And he will f take a shot at Bartleby. Okay, so uh, as Petunia starts hissing, Nico takes a step forward and a flash of purple energy appears <laughs> and is gone and appears behind you all. And I need everyone to roll initiative. All right. All right. All right. Good roll for Bud and Petunia. That is a, that's an 11 for Grand Amy. All right. So uh, 25 to 20. 20 21. to 15. 16. Okay. Uh, 17 for Bud and Petunia. Did you give me, Gabe? Yeah. Uh, who was... Did, Max was... 16? 16? Yeah. Bud and Petunia are 17. Grand Amy? 11. Okay. All right. Uh, up first, uh, Jacob, you did have that arrow out. You'd already declared you were shooting. We're going to go ahead and get that off, and then we'll jump into the first round of combat. Okay. Uh, so that'll be a shot from Bud here. <laughs> God. Uh, so that's an 11 to hit at a plus eight. I'm oh. so over... God, these dice rollers. I'm going to stop using them. I'm, I'm going to just regular dice. Okay. This is absurd. Uh, so, of note, you loose the arrow and you know you are are sure that you're going to strike your mark. And you watch it strike Bartleby's shoulder and it just clinks off as if his skin is too tough for it to penetrate. Right. And then we go into the first round of combat. Dice Clay... You have these two goblins on either side of you. Uh, let me go ahead and give you guys... There you go. You've got a grid up. Grid snapping is turned on. Perfect. All right. So, um, so as a bonus action, I'm going to draw my sword of mockery and throw it in the air to where it starts swooping around me to add one to my AC. Okay. And then I will look at, um, let's see, Bartleby was the one Bob shot at? Yes. All right. I'll look at Bartleby. Uh, you know what? <clears throat> Been itching to use this. <clears throat> Eldritch Blast. <laughs> okay. Uh, roll to hit. Uh, already did to hit 12. Okay, with a 12, your shot goes wide as Bartleby, with a preternatural quickness, just steps to the side. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, bonus action? I did. Bonus action was draw the sword and throw it up in the air. That's right. Movement. Um, you know what? I'm going to move behind Petunia. Okay. But in Petunia... Uh, all right, so the goblins, Nico and Bartleby, are on either side of you. What do you do? Uh, with things 
set a little more uh, to proper fashion as uh, the Beastmaster Ranger setup functions now. Uh, Petunia will, I will use my bonus action to have Petunia run up and make an attack on Bartleby. Okay. Uh, so she is going to make a claw attack. This will be an additional plus two from what it shows here. Oh my gosh. Seven to hit. That's going to miss. Um, okay. right, I'm following through with what I said I was going to do. I'm done. Uh, so uh, <laughs> Bud will turn around and take a shot at Nico. Oh, my God. I can't even make this up. That's a two on the die. So that's ten. I just I can't. Nope. Uh, Bud, startled as he, uh, as he is by the whole <laughs> endeavor, um, will shoot. Uh, spaz and run behind the tent over here. Okay. Uh, up next is Max. Uh, okay, cool. I was I'm excited to cast this new spell. So <clears throat> I look at uh, who's this? Oh yeah, I get to mess Nico up. Okay, I'm like, super excited about this. Uh, so I look at Nico and uh, I'm like, you you don't feel right, and Grandmammy doesn't like you either, and I tear out a page of my book and I put it flat on the ground and then I put my fist through the page and underneath him uh, a fist of earth and stone comes up out of it and tries to grab him and he needs to make a, a strength save. Nice. Okay. I'm casting Maximilian's Earthen Grasp. Hell yeah! Uh, strength saving throw. It's a 14. Uh, there we go. Uh, 16 on the Damn. ability check. Okay, so he saves. Um, so on a failed save, he takes damage and is restrained. So he takes nine Correct. bludgeoning okay. damage, and he's restrained. Okay. Wait, I thought he made the save. He did. Yeah, that's for a failed save. So yeah, on on a successful sta save, is, is that is it just no no, no. I sorry I can't sorry re re rewind rewording? He rolled a sixteen. Your ability, your saving throw is fourteen, so he succeeds. Right, but it says on a... F sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, does he take half? Yeah, we're, we've are we been playing all day. It's like... Meh. I don't think he even... I don't think he even takes half damage. Okay. No. Most level Dang, scores we do. Wait. Oh, I'm only gonna work. Yeah, okay. So you can, you can make a ruling on this. It says the target must make a strength saving throw. On a failed save, the target takes 2d6 bludgeoning damage and is restrained for the spell's duration. As an action, you can cause the hand to crush the restrained target who must make a strength saving throw. It takes 2d6 bludgeoning damage on a failed save or half as much damage on a successful one. That's like after I've formed it, I guess. So I guess the first one, if he saves, he just doesn't take damage. But Correct. from now on, if he, if, if he saves, he takes half. Is that right? That's. Let me pull it up. Maybe real quick. I put it in the chat. Oh no, it's not. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't have the full text. That's really weird. Yeah, the right. way the way it's written there, if he makes the first save, then there's not even half damage, which is really weird. Yeah. For a leveled spell. Right, that's what I'm saying. That's fine. <clears throat> so he's able to to avoid uh, avoid that. That's fine. Uh, that's my uh, turn. So as long as you are concentrating on it, I'm going to say as an action, you can cause the hand to reach for a different creature. So the hand is there. Yes, yeah, yeah. because it, yeah. it is a concentration yeah. spell. My hand is effectively like in the ground, like moving around as this hand is moving around above ground. <laughs> there That's you awesome. go. There's your hand. I love it. For now. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Um. Up. Boom. Turn that off. All right. Um. Uh, it is their turn. Um. So. Uh. Bartleby looking at Petunia. Pull up the right thing here. Uh, reaches out as if he's going to claw at Petunia. And then as Petunia goes to dodge, he tries to bite her instead. Okay. So, uh, with, her fancy new, with her fancy new armor and leveling and such, right. Petunia has an AC of 16 now. Okay, so... Beef possum. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, 13 sure to hit. She, pretty sure she has uh, the highest 
13 will not hit. Okay, so uh, from Petunia's perspective, this claw comes in and she goes to move out of the way, and then Bartleby moves forward with the mouth and the jaws distend even further than they should. Spooby! And, uh, but he still misses with Petunia's nimble cat-like reflexes. Uh, Awesome take! Nico uh, is going to charge forward, going down and almost galloping on all fours. And as he gets to about here, he's going to leap at Mad Max, Master of the Elements. Uh, And as he does, his true form reveals itself as the bar guest that he is leaps down and attacks Mad Max. Such an Uh, underrated monster. I love the bar guests so much. Uh, does a natural one hit you? No. So, as he leaps up and it's this terrifying moment of you're like, oh, he's not so big, he's not all so big! And he goes to land and that foot comes down and hits a loose rock and just... And falls to his shoulder. Uh, if you would like to take an attack of opportunity as he falls prone before you, feel free to. Can I do it with the hand? No, sir. Dang, okay, that's fine. Um, I will... Mm, I don't really have a whole... Can I Can I cast a cantrip? Uh, not unless you have a warcaster. Okay, I do not. Uh, then uh, I will... Uh, I'll just... Am I able to, like, draw a dagger and slash at him? Absolutely. Okay, great, I'll do that. I also nat want. Okay, so... This is a, uh, <laughs> you're, sh- you're shaking. You're shaking from this moment. You're trying to hold on to your spell book, and it's going, and you pull the dagger. Oh, God, it's gone. <laughs> but you hold on to the spell book. And as you hold that spell book, that concentration remains for your earthen grasp. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, Grand Amy, you're up. What you got? Okay. So Grand Amy is going to... Um... Sorry, I just want to look at this staff of mine real quick to make sure I'm thinking of it quickly. Yeah. So, Grand Emmy says, All right, time to eat. And uh, cast. I'm going to cast Bark Skin um, with the uh, Staff of Utility. And then bonus action to Wild Shape into a Dire Wolf. What, is, what does that look like, both of them? What does what look like? Oh, both of them, bark skin and uh, you transforming into oh, a wolf so with sure, bark skin. sure, sure, sure. So uh, the bark skin, the uh, skin, the green skin that she has begins to kind of knot and ring up as it uh, gets darker and darker and almost uh, brown and it looks more like moss. As then she then expands out and into this massive, massive wolf. And leaps around uh, to flank and come behind Bartleby. And that will be... Got an astral table for drag and drop monsters. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Absolutely uh, an amazing time-saving feature. Massive howl. Okay. And as you howl... Bartleby, going from his slash and recovery uh, at Petunia, looks back at you and just screeches back. And as he screeches, his jaw distends even further. Back to the top of the round. Dice, you're up. All right, so Dice looks over, and he sees um, Grammy turn into a freaking wolf (laughs) and the possum. And he sees Max, and he sees Bud peeing himself. And he sees Max, and he's like, He's he's the one I dislike the least. Okay, and I... <laughs> <laughs> move over here. Um, so I'm going to uh, let's see. So many new spells. Um, Bud, you are on deck. I'm going to how's uh, how are you looking for uh, hit points? Nobody's been hit yet. Oh, they? I'm fine. No, I'm good. No, no, no. <laughs> Then I'm just going to try it again. Eldritch Blast. Okay, roll the hit. 
It's a new toy. Six. Okay, I might I might be pulling a Jacob. Uh, so that's a. Nope, that's a thing. I don't know yep. why it's lit up green, but yeah. Um, uh, I don't know. You rolled a one. So as you you go to blast it out, you reach your hand forth, and and it just the new magical energies, this new trick that you're figuring out. You snap to make it happen, and it's oh shit, that wasn't it. And you you miscast it and and consume that bonus action for you, sir. Oh, bonus action. I will... Um, nobody needs to get healed. I'll hold it. Okay. Uh, so we have a comment from Tiffers Cosplay. Spell descriptions are the most important part about d and I'm going to donate for inspiration for anyone who is, uses it as long as it's to murder Nico. <laughs> Which Excellent. one's Nico? The Bargast. The Bargast. All right. Well, this, this one at least. All right. Bonus action for dice. Um, no, I have nothing. Um, okay. I've got a bonus action to heal. That's Part of inspiration, if you want. Uh, do I really want to? <laughs> okay, fine. Um, I mean, if you want to get eaten. I look at, I look at, uh, I look at, uh, Max and... You know, out of all the people that i met since I've been living with the tribe, I, I don't want you to die a gruesome death. So, you know, do, do better. <laughs> My <laughs> heart... Oh. <laughs> All right. Is that, a, is, that a, is that a D6? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. D6 inspiration. Yeah. Bud and Petunia, you are up. Uh, all right. So Petunia is going to... Max, you are on deck. Got it. Petunia is going to continue to circle Bartleby uh, opposite of Dire Wolf uh, Grandemy. Uh, Bud is going to use his bonus action to hide behind the tent. Um from Nico there, and then uh, pop out and take a shot at him with his longbow. Okay. Um, to hit. Do I need to roll the stealth to determine whether or not I'm hidden from him, or do I just get a roll with advantage? Uh, I, he's harried by two separate foes. We'll just go ahead and give it to you for now. <clears throat> okay. So... Roll twice... That is a 19 on the die for a 27 to hit. You hit. And that, since he has now shown himself to be larger than me, uh, I will include Fury of the Small on this attack for a total of 13 points of damage to Nico. Okay. 13 points of damage as the arrow pierces the hide right along the, the shoulder of the side exposed to you is no oh god and he'll run back <laughs> uh, cool petunia gonna roll for anything uh, no i used my bonus action to hide rather than activate petunia this turn so petunia is just okay. continuing I, to just circle since i gave you the the bonus for being quote hidden uh go ahead and do petunia we're being generous it is a charity after all Oh, uh, okay. Well, Petunia will make an attack on Bartleby then. All right. Uh, do, do, do. She will make another claw attack back. Uh, it's not great, but uh, 15? Uh, 15 does not hit. Her claw lashes out and just just can't pierce. His thick, leathery skin. She gives gives a hiss, uh, and will stay there, uh, opposite of Grandemy. And I am gonna go feed my dogs, so they will stop this incessant Absolutely. whining. I will be Max, back as soon up. as I can be. Yeah. Okay. So uh, my I'm still maintain, maintaining my concentration on this earthen grasp, and uh, you see my eyes dart from the bar guest over to the hand, and then down to my hand, and then I'm like. I don't know if this is going to work, but we're going to try it. And then I pop out of existence and I misty step here. And okay. as I pop out of existence, the hand also <clears throat> disappears. And when I pop back into existence, the hand pops back where I was. 
uh, right in front of Nico and erupts, erupts from the ground and it's gonna, I'm doing the same thing. I'm trying to uh, uh, grab him. So it's another strength save. Uh, so you can do either or. You can attack another creature or you can move it to a different unoccupied space within range. So I'm... A, I'm... Hmm? So you, you Misty stepped. Yes, and, you and I'm attacking either... her. You can either attack something within the hand's current reach. Can I not move the hand? You can cause it to reach for a different creature or to move to a different unoccupied space. Oh, crap. Okay, that sucks. And no, the hand only has a five-foot reach. So, hmm. um... Damn. Uh, okay. That's fine. I'll drop uh, it. All right. Uh, so I bonus action Misty Step. I can only cantrip now. So I mean, you can move that forward. That is always an option. Yeah, but I wouldn't be able to attack. Correct. So, and I want to murder Nico really badly. So, um, <laughs> all right, we're gonna try. We're gonna try a classic firebolt then. Let's, let's all right. Try, let's try fire. Classic firebolt. Oh man, it was almost a net twenty. It's a dirty twenty though. Dirty twenty hits for seven points of fire damage okay as the fire strikes its hide it roars up its body even more intensely than you were expecting uh, and that's my turn bonus action action i'm done all right yeah that uh fire seems to to harm him quite a bit oh you don't like fire uh, do you at the end of your turn it's theirs and reeling from that attack, Nico looks at you, looks at Dice, looks back over towards where its ally is, and goes for Dice. Oh no. And will make a single attack against Dice. Um, do, 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 my do. AC is 17 with the Mocking Sword. 21. Okay. Does it only uh, mock them when it misses? Uh, no, probably the whole time. <laughs> the whole time. Okay. So it's so it still mocks them. Yeah. So so the sword in my voice goes. Um, Two wrongs don't make a right. Just look at your parents. Okay. So, uh, I need you to make a strength saving throw, please. Oh God, no. I'm riding this train straight to hell. I'm going to keep using these dice rollers. All right, nine. So you take 11 points of piercing damage as its fangs bite into you. And then the fangs latched into your hide. It lifts you up and tosses you. And you go five up. Clear that. Undo. As I fly away, I go. Ten, fifteen. <laughs> you cut out. Five, ten, As I fly away, I'm going to stay. I'm gonna blame. <laughs> uh, you fly to to here and are knocked prone. Oh, awesome. Uh, then Bartleby, uh, seeing the obvious threat in the room being the uh, dire wolf, not the possum, uh, is going to look at uh the dire wolf and make a single attack against the dire wolf uh 18 will definitely hit a dire wolf yep uh for six points of damage it's a really terrible roll and i need you to make a strength saving throw please as the dire wolf that's gonna be a nat 20 plus three okay so biting into you uh forgetting that he's in his smaller form he goes to rear up and throw you and you don't go anywhere so you take the six points of damage and that is it for him grand dammy you are up you have the goblinoid form of bartleby like latched into your shoulder yeah a little bit of blood coming down and uh uh, I'm just going to attack uh, Bartleby 
Uh, Petunia is there. I'm going to use pack tactics and get my nice. Uh, Absolutely, get my advantage as uh, as it wheels around, and Grandammy just kind of goes right for an ankle, and that is thirteen on the first one. Thirteen on the roll plus uh, eighteen to hit. Okay, uh, 18 hits. Okay. And if you, you need to make a, uh, strength saving throw, uh, okay. beat a, beat a 13. We're probably going to be able to pull that one off. Come on, die roller, catch up. There we go. 18. All right. So seven piercing damage. As, Seven piercing uh, damage as, to Bartleby. As the uh, wolf tries to pull Bartleby off its feet, off his, off off their feet. Okay. And Bartleby, even being a smaller form than the dire wolf, uh, manages to resist it uh, and stay firmly planted, as if he weighs a lot more than he looks like he does. Dice, back to the top. You are up, bud. You are on deck. Dice, you are prone. I stand up with half my mu movement, blood coming out of my snout, and I look at both of these fellas out of breath. Let's see how um, how far away using the handy dandy roller exactly thirty feet and twenty five. Okay, so I'm gonna look at both of them, and I'm going to say. You both look like your faces were on fire and put out of a pickaxe. As <laughs> holy hell. <laughs> God. <laughs> As I cast Bane on both of them. Okay, that is a wisdom saving throw? Uh, uh, no, charisma saving throw of 13. Okay, so Nico rolls a 16. Bartleby rolls a 19. Uh, not their weakest skill. Mm. That was worth a try. Absolutely. Uh, anything for your bonus action? Um, but you are on yeah. deck. I'm going to uh, healing word myself. <laughs> and Absolutely. be like, and be like oh, why am I with these goblins? <laughs> All right. But... <laughs> Is Dice moving anywhere, or is he already moved? In, like, is that as far as you're going? I'm standing still. All right. Um, do, 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 do. So I missed a little bit there. Apologies for having to step away. Uh, what is, how is Nico looking at this point? Has Nico taken much uh, more other than what a, I put into a, him? A firebolt flashed up his side, a bolt. Um, and like uh, seemed, to, seemed to not be too thrilled about it. Um, all right. Uh, well, I'm just going to keep, uh, things rolling here, I think. And I will pop back out and make an attack and have a uh, bonus action be for Petunia to make an attack on Bartleby. So for me, that is, that is a 22 to hit Nico. Yes, definitely hits. For eight points of piercing damage. Okay. And bonus action for Petunia. That is uh, 21 to hit for her. Definitely hits. And as she, her claws finally catch purchase. Ooh. That's two fours on the D4. That's awesome. So Petunia will rake her tiny, not so tiny, uh, rather large for opossum claws uh, across to them for uh, 11 points of slashing damage. All right. Uh, the claws going across and, and Bartleby's goblin form kind of lunging forward a little bit. And rah! And uh, in proper fashion, uh, Bud will run behind another tent back over here. Okay. Checks out. Uh, Max, you're up. 
How does um, how does this bar guest in front of me look in general? Nico. Yes. Uh, he is uh, definitely not looking great after that uh, hit of fire. He's still got a little spunk in him. If you were putting him between bees and bees, he'd be bees. All right. Um, I, I'm kind of pissed off at this point. So I'm like, oh, you don't like fire, do you? Well, let's see how you like extra crispy. Oh, and I no. pull off one of the beads. Oh, no. <laughs> and Max isn't entirely sure how this works. So <laughs> I'm going to make, make an Arcana check and see. Okay. Do it. Do I it. Got, I got an 18. Do got it. Rip. We got to get Bill's character out of there anyway. Rip. Do it. Rip dice. <laughs> Yeah, I got an 18 uh, on, my, <laughs> on my Arcana check. So I think I have a general idea of like how the fireball is going to shape itself. So I, I'd like to try to place it at, as advantageously as possible so that it doesn't hit so anybody. Like, Am I able to do that? Over here, maybe, or over here. Like You can you can figure it out. Yeah, so I don't, wanna, I don't want to hit my companions. And I don't want to hit myself, yeah. Okay. You can do that. So I toss the bead. Um and I, uh, I think he just has to make a dex save. Is that right? Dex save. Oh man, with yeah. a five. Okay. Whew. Uh, extra, extra crispy. crispy. Ooh, I All think right. that's a really solid damage tell, roll. You, you oh, gotta tell me God. how it's gonna be. Oh you my God. You gotta tell me how it goes. You gotta tell me how it goes. You gotta mm. describe this. You're killing Nico. Remember, we're doing this for the donation. <laughs> that was actually a decent fireball damage roll. That's a astounding. So those don't ever happen. So I, uh, I'm gonna channel my inner crun, uh, croon here. I, I put the bead into my mouth, and then I spit it, and it uh, goes. And as it travels, it grows larger and larger until it hits the ground, and then the fire just expands outwards. <clears throat> and this flash of, you're welcome, Tiff. This flash of uh, fire blinds everyone. You're, oh, whoa! What was that? <laughs> And you look back to see the form of Nico inflamed and kind of doing that, that rearing horse bucking, <laughs> trying to put it out, trying to put it out as his form <laughs> starts flickering in and out of reality. It is still there, but it, it's, it's, he is really sucking wind. Damn, 35. Did I get hit by the soup pot? <laughs> <laughs> if you would like to. No, I do not. Okay. So it, might be sufficiently, it might be sufficiently warm to not just be complete sludge anymore. I don't know. You'll have to check it out at, at the end of the battle here. Um, so uh, at the end of your uh, bonus action movement? Um... I will, yeah, I'll move up a little bit here. Oh, he's, yeah, I'm, I'll move to here. Okay. Uh, so, uh, at the end of your turn, uh, the flames <laughs> licking up and down Nico as he is going to try to make a save to see if he stays. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, Mad Max, Master of the Elements, describe to me how the flames will uh, banish this form of the Bargast. Before so I actually, so I actually don't know how Bargasts work. Uh, what is like? Explain what is what is happening. So this is mechanically not a pure Bargast. Okay. Uh, there, but he Bargasts if they are engulfed in flames. Fireball does not normally count. Um, when they are engulfed in flames, they get banished back to hell. So, as this is happening, his form is flickering in and out of reality as it is a flame. He fails his saving throw. What happens? This is your how would you like to do this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool, cool. So, um, I'm picturing it. It's like it's like fleeing from all the, the fire around it. And there's just like, it's not everywhere, but there's just like bursts of it. And so, it like shies back from from one piece of flame and then it like kind of stumbles into another piece of flame and the smoke is just kind of surrounding it and choking it and you hear it screeching out and then it stumbles into the last like larger piece of uh, roiling flame and it just falls onto it and the flame goes out and then it disappears and just ash in the form of the bar guest floats away 
uh, as if his form crumbles. Uh, Bartleby, looking over, seeing the fate of his compatriots, is going to spend his action. Uh, revealing his true form as he grows and roars at Petunia and the dire wolf. Uh, up next, Grandammy. Dice, you are on deck. All right. Grandammy going to make an attack with advantage. Uh, going after the tendons and sinewy parts. That is a... Oh, boy, wait a minute. A 17 to hit. Uh, 17 oh. just hits. Nice. Let me let me clarify. Hold on. I. Sorry about that. I was looking at a different stat block. Uh, that is a. Yeah. Okay. 17. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And that is going to do. I need a strength saving throw. Uh, beat a 13. Okay. okay, waiting for it to roll. Maybe. All right, we'll go old school here. Uh, 19 on the die. All right. Uh, so able to pull back from the attempt to trip it and knock it prone, but not to take the, not to uh, prevent the 10 points of piercing damage as the massive jaws just clamp down on another leg. Right on. All right. Uh, bonus action movement. Uh, you gonna, don't really you, you just stay there, not worry I'm about gonna, anything. I'm just gonna, yeah. I'm just going to stay here. I'm going to kind of, I'm trying to block its exit a little bit. I don't want to give it another gap near this wall. All right. Dice, you are up, bud. You're on deck. All right. So, um, let's see. What am I going to do? Um, I'm going to step forward to here. I'm dice is covered in just wounds. He's had a bad day. He can't hit anybody with his new abilities. He's just mad. He's going to look over here at, at the remaining Bartleby. He smells like burnt bar gas. He, he smells like burnt Nico now. And just, <laughs> he just looks mad. He's going to look over here at Bartleby. I'm going to cast Vicious Mockery. It's going to be a 13 wisdom save. Okay. And I'm going to say, okay. you know what? I insult your father, but I don't think you ever knew him. <laughs> uh, 12. Yes. <laughs> 12 on the save. Nice. Let's get that damage. And, uh... Not bad. It's a three. <laughs> three points of damage. So on a 1d4, three's not bad. Yeah, bad yeah, yeah. Level. What, there's a there's a rider effect for that though, right? For vicious what? mockery, and there's something else that goes along, like some other effect that goes along with vicious mockery, isn't it? Yeah, he gets a disadvantage to his next disadvantage. attack. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's what I thought. That's one of the main reason I did it to protect right. Petunia, not Grammy. Petunia. <laughs> you gotta, gotta be specific. <laughs> All right, bonus action or movement from dice. Um. Let's see, everybody's good on health. Um, I'm gonna no, I'm not gonna throw another uh, healing out there unless Grammy was lower. All right, bud, good. you're up. Uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I will bonus action have uh, uh, feeling some some inspiration from from Bud there, even if not mechanically. Uh, Petunia gives a thumbs up, uh, and will rake back down with her claws again. Uh, All right, for a. That is an 18 to hit. 18 hits. Uh, that's another pretty good roll. That is going to be three, one, uh, nine points of damage. Nice. And then uh, Bud will pop around the corner of the tent 
and make an attack with his bow for a 19 to hit. Okay, definitely hits. And almost max damage. It's close. Uh, that's going to be... Let me double check that. 11 points. Speaking of, uh, speaking of max, max is on deck. That's Got 11 it. points of damage, and he will once again duck behind the tent. Okay. Oh, good Bartleby job, Petunia! Not, and the Bartleby's not looking great. Uh, Mad Max, Master of the Elements. All right, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. As I move, uh, there's still pieces of fire sputtering out. And I'm going to basically scoop up uh, uh, like a handful of fire and then launch it at Bartleby with Firebolt. All right. Okay, I'm going to use my Tides of Chaos. So, Gabe, uh, if at some point you would like to make me roll on the magic Wild Magic table, let me know. I absolutely would. I was waiting for that to come in here to play at some point. Try that again. Okay, better. Uh, It's a 19 to hit. 19 hits. Roll damage. Seven Uh, seven points. Yeah. Okay, so uh, once again, the fire seeming to injure this bar guest far more than it usually does. And Max, as you scoop up this fire and throw it, it's still on your hand. (laughs) <laughs> oh god oh god oh god please roll on the wild magic table yeah okay cool all right it's a d100 i got an 18 okay <laughs> this is a good one do you want me to read it yes please you grow a long beard made of feathers that remains until you sneeze At which point the feathers explode out from your face. (laughs) So your goblin form, you're like, "Ah, ah, ah," and you finally flick it off. But everyone else sees the fire on your chin. And then you realize it's there and it's hot. It's it's patting it off. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Uh, uh, Oh, God. As this beard that goes to the floor made of feathers Here's <laughs> wonderful bonus action or you've already used your movement bonus action from max uh, i'm good i have no bonus action economy all right bartleby looking around not super thrilled with his options right now uh is going to uh attempt a shove attack against grandmammy so Grandmammy, uh, strength or dexterity, please. All right, then I am going. It's likely going to be strength. Yep, that's what it's gonna be. <clears throat> uh, whoa, not good. Uh, nine. Out of okay. curiosity, did anybody ever use the inspiration point for Nico? I didn't need to. Uh, she hasn't donated yet. I haven't seen the donation yet. No, it went no, through. It absolutely went yeah, through. It went through. It was a ten dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Donation. it went through before. It's there. Okay. Yeah, so I was, I was about to say who it goes to, and I'm like, I, it probably goes to Derek. I, yeah, I missed that. I apologize. Yeah, that uh, inspiration will go to Derek for you. delivering the killing blow. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, Grandmammy, what was the strength check? Oh, uh, sorry, that was on nine. <laughs> All right, so you get shoved backwards as the Bartleby just shoulder checks you into the wall and then breaks away. Five, 10, 15, does, 20. Does Petunia get an attack 25, 30, 35, 40. Yeah, if 45, he's. 50, <clears throat> 55, 60, right there. Yeah, All right, if, Petunia, if attack of opportunity. Absolutely. So. Uh, that's another 18 to hit. Definitely hits. So as she makes another swipe with her claws, that's decidedly not as good. Uh, that is only six points of damage to hit. Uh, on the nose though, Petunia, (laughs) as Bartleby goes and your teeth latch into it and its form starts shifting in and out of reality. Mm. How would you like to do this? Uh, 
Oh, that's weird. Okay, so, <laughs> so, Petunia latching onto his back, reaches around with that front claw, the thumb going straight into the eye, and the jaw comes up, and the bottom jaw comes down, and it's ash. And Petunia lands on her feet. I, you appre- <laughs> I appreciate so much that you understood what I was going for with that. <laughs> it was the hand motion. That, <laughs> that, was, that was the goal. Uh, it was right. certainly wasn't the round round. So. Petunia has a career in uh, professional wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Bud just turns the, the, the corner to the tent, just, just like slack jawed. Petunia! <laughs> and as the pounding of blood in your ears settles and the ashes of the two bar guests float away you remember stories children's stories that as a matter of fact that one told you about goblins demons in goblin form who would come kidnap you if you didn't listen to grandmammy oh called bar guests oh. and the stories flood back through your mind and you go Oh, God, she was right. Grand me, I uh, thought those were just stories. No good. Dice very confused. What the hell were those things? You just see Grand Emmy just in the wolf form as, as Bud says that. This goes. <laughs> and just turns around. So I think this is a beautiful place for us to take a super quick bio break. Uh, Right now, we are going to begin a raffle. So, Jacob, if you don't mind filling us in on this raffle for the Heroic Maps bundle pack. Yes, indeed. So the way this is going to work, I have to pull this back up here real quick because I had to reset earlier. Give me just one moment while I explain. Uh, So... Uh, what is going to happen is here within the chat itself uh, of uh, Twitch, I am going to start a raffle here in just a moment. Let's see. Cloudbot into the giveaways. Custom start giveaway. Uh, so it should pop up in chat here that we have started a giveaway just like that right there. Uh, as you can read from what it says, if you type exclamation point raffle, that will enter you and grant you a ticket. Uh, at the end of our break, whenever we come back, uh, I will end the raffle and it will randomly pick a winner from the list of everyone that snags a ticket. So if you are interested in this $25 value stream bundle of tickets, uh, I'm sorry, of maps for virtual ta- tabletop, please enter the raffle now. We will be back here in just a few minutes. Uh, In the meantime, exclamation point raffle gets you an enter. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. We'll be right back.
And we are back. Uh, yeah, sorry about that, guys. Uh, we were having a little chat real fast. I didn't take us off screen for it. Uh, we were discussing a couple logistical things real fast before we cut back in. But we are back from our break. Um, Gabriel, do you want to talk about what we were talking about? Or do you want me to? Everybody. Uh, there we go. My mic's working again. Welcome, everybody. Uh, we are. We were up to like 24 views there for just a minute. That was awesome. Uh, those of you who haven't been following us, we are raising money for Extra Life Charities, specifically donating to Norton's Children's here in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, if you would like to donate, there are some incentives that interact with our session. Uh, you can give a player inspiration. You can name an NPC uh, getting towards the last session, so you're going to dump a whole lot of responsibility on Bill for uh, naming characters in his last session. We got through a Nico, a Bartleby, uh, there's still a Bo Jiden, and uh, there was a Dinguished uh, Tooth Seeker, uh, and an Orcish uh, uh, Peaky Blinder fella they met a little while ago. Uh, all of the funds raised go to benefit Norton Children's Hospital, and uh, most of us are located here in Louisville. So if you would like to donate, uh, there should be a link in there. Uh, you can also go to uh, Extra Life and find us for the Forever DMs. Uh, this is our first year doing this. We have smashed our goal. Uh, we are almost to $2,000 as our... Uh, goal we started at a grand and we hit it within the first hour or two of playing it was just absolutely amazing thank you everybody for donating uh thus far our heroes have ventured their way up a mountain and gone through a map thing uh lovingly donated by uh heroic maps uh who we also have a raffle we will be wrapping up here in just a few minutes and announcing the winner also a special shout out to astral tabletop the hosting software we're using for this virtual tabletop uh really cool lots of great options in there growing and expanding every day especially in these isolated times where we have to figure out how we can communicate with each other while not necessarily being able to sit at the same table and roll dice uh, Astral Table was phenomenal and was in touch with us thanks to Bill, a uh, member of our party who does some work for them and helped us get all of this set up and hosted, which is wonderful. Uh, and we're going to be closing our raffle now for a map bundle worth $25 from Heroic Maps. Uh, Jacob. And with entries now officially closed, picking the winner, drum roll, please. And Markaboy, you've been sitting here with us for a large portion of the day. And thank you so much. Gee, we are super excited to be able to offer you this uh, virtual tabletop uh, that, entry that here. That makes me so, happy because wasn't he the one that was complaining and couldn't donate because he didn't have any money? That, absolutely. Yeah, that makes me, so, dude, that makes me happy, happy. got something. <laughs> dude, thank you so much for hanging out with us for most of the yeah. day. Uh, we're going to go into the last half of, uh, or the last little bit of this journey that I am leading the players to the top of Shearing Peak in search of the Heart of Norton, a uh, mysterious artifact that can unlock the way into Norton's Rest. Uh, get that? Norton's Children's Hospital, Norton's Rest. Uh... Anyway, I'm horrible. Don't mind me. Uh, so as we left off, uh, congratulations to Marky Boy. Thank you for everybody who's been donating uh, and players. As the energy of the combat settles in your ear and looking around and remembering those ghost stories Grandmammy Graca had told you about bar guests and how they would get you in the night if you didn't listen to her. Realizing what happened to this goblin tribe it must have been the bar guests. They must have gotten them. Obviously, that's what the nursery rhymes say. That's what the haunted stories that Grandmammy Graca would tell you would say. So, um, and, Grandammy, you, you so you you say you came here before, right? <laughs> and they didn't listen to what you said, and then the bar guests came and get, got them. <laughs> <laughs> As 
Grand she's, Grand Emmy Gracca's dire so wolf form. Max, she's still a damn wolf. <laughs> Go ahead, Gabe. Uh, and making your way out of the cave, not really finding anything of refuse, that cauldron uh, did warm up, and a sludgy green soup that probably only Crun would eat was left behind. Um, although there was a little sampling of it taken uh, earlier in the session, complete with fungus and everything. <laughs> Safe uh, and sound uh, in my pack gross. pocket. To be delivered uh, making... to Krun at a later date. You, you know, Krun was his um is his nickname. You know what his full name is, right? Son of Kern. No, uh, I, I believe he told me once it was Crundle. <laughs> <laughs> making your way back down the path and to the fork in the road that you came up earlier. Uh, there's actually a familiar face there uh, waiting for you as Dinguish Toofseekin comes down the mountain. Uh, I told that fool it wouldn't listen. No! It's you! Uh, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> how, you, how you doing? <laughs> I'm, I'm going home. That's what I'm doing. The idiot, he never listened. And well, he got him. Okay. What, what happened to the old man? Yeah, you go up the mountain, there's a big dude in shiny armor. Didn't work out very well for him. Anywho, good luck! Oh, that sounds not good. Man, Dinguish continues on down the steps down the mountain and you see Dinguish is unarmed uh, but he's got a, a little little bundle on his side of some food and some rations and he's just he's leaving. I don't know what you're talking about he's packing guns <sighs> anyway uh, he heads on down the mountain um, as we are heading up uh, across this, uh, Bud will kind of saunter up over to Dice and be like, uh, you, you, you look like you took a few punches there, and he'll take out three of his good berries and hand them to you. What do oh, I look like to you? You just, get, you just walk up and give me your berries? You just want me to hold your berries? Okay, I mean, I'll you hold can, your berries. You can, you can <laughs> eat them if you... Oh, and then he just kind of saunters back up over to Petunia. <laughs> how, how much? How much does that heal me? Uh, just one per berry, so three hit points. <laughs> three hit. For points. the record, uh, Bud still has two healing potions and Grandma. Is that, that what those were? I didn't even know. That. I just thought they were random oh, yeah. pots oh, of yeah. things. Cool. So yeah, we can we can say I that. Uh, we can say that uh, uh, Harlan Sanders the uh, second identified them to you. Oh, fantastic. I, I will mark those pretty I, I seriously picked those up or we picked those up thinking I thought we were gonna find like a big cauldron that had to be filled with like red uh, liquid. Gotcha. Yeah, and then yeah. we were gonna be like, uh I was I was but expecting them, Yeah, I was expecting they them to be puzzle, part yeah. of another puzzle. Uh so uh continuing our way up the mountain. Uh, these stairs, ancient and rickety and and covered in frost and ice, continue their way up. And after a few slips and a near fall by Eeny, Meeny, Miny, Bud, uh, as, after a near fall from Bud, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you... <laughs> he falls down, Petunia grabs him, hauls him back up. Yeah, totally checks out. Uh, after a near fall, you find your way to the top of the mountain. I still have my, fe uh, I still have my feather beard, by the way, and I'm quite fond of it, and I can't stop stroking it. Uh, what? Grand Danny will be leading the way uh, as the dire wolf, uh, still in dire wolf form. Okay, let me... Taken us. Uh, after he nearly fell, uh, Petunia will have uh, thrown Bud onto her back like one of her uh joeys and um 
uh, expecting him to stay put. So he is now riding on that. Petunia again, up, uh, uh, walking side by side with Direwolf Grandamy. Look at that map. Such majesty. Yes. So the <laughs> so cool. No, I love you snow, are in no, like weather effects. You are in the cloud tops here and overlooking the entire fertile valley of everything where you all reside and where the dangerous human settlement of Norton's Rest lies. At the peak of the mountain, there is only a pair of columns outlining an entrance to a cave where you see smeared across the opening the old withered form of Indiana Gnome. No! <laughs> oh, no! He's, you see... Where is he? Was it snakes? He always talked about how much he hated snakes. <laughs> he was mumbling yeah. about him in his sleep. Yeah. I think he was uh, the... cast by his own franchise. <laughs> <laughs> so, as long uh, as it wasn't aliens. It wasn't. He aliens. looks like a Sankara stone now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, his form laying scattered against the rock uh, out of the entrance of this cavern. What would you like to do? Oh God! If it wasn't aliens, the wise ones. If it wasn't aliens, was it Germans? That's even worse. Sorry, I'll stop now. Um, <laughs> this is when we start so... going off the rails. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we, we've been doing this uh, for closing in on 12 hours, folks. Bear with us. We still got, we still got a four-hour game to go. We still got more to go. <laughs> um, um, uh, uh, Petunia go. will continue forward for sure and uh, carrying Bud with her to, to go up and give us a good sniff on Indy's body. I will go up yeah, and I'm... pay my respects to Indy, as in go through his corpse. Okay. Uh, as you get to the the entrance of the cave, revealing before you is this large stone plinth. Columns toppled over inside, and upon the stone plinth is the statue of an angel. Long at one knee, longsword pointed down and hand extended out, and in his hand is a sphere, all dark stone, undisturbed, no evidence of any struggle beyond the smear of blood that was Indiana Gnome. Uh, since you specified, uh Dice, I need you to roll an investigation check for me. Uh, oh, no, me. Don't, I used to know you. Uh, while while he rolls this, uh, Marga Boy, thank you so much. Uh, I know you had mentioned, you know, not really having a lot of money right now. Uh, giving anything at all in, in donation to us is, it means a ton. Thank you for being here. Thank you for donating. Um, it, it's been great hanging out with you all today. And, uh, I, I'm assuming that was a healing potion for Petunia there, so uh, we'll add another one to the stock. Thank you so much. Why, why is everyone so giving much, Petunia Boy. the healing potions? Because everybody Nobody loves Petunia. Nobody gave Krun anything but indigestion. So oh, nice. to be fair, I'm fairly certain Marco Boy would have given it to Krun were Krun here right now. So hey, no, no maybe, one likes dice clay. Maybe I'm not here to be liked. I'm not what? here for your approval. I'm not here for your <laughs> entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, even Bill, even your wife thinks Petunia is the best. So, well, Actually, Mark, she just thank told you so me much. When we're on break. She says my character is her favorite thing in the world. Awesome. <laughs> so, uh, investigation check for searching through Indiana Gnome and his belongings. Is that just just dice, or can can other people? Uh, 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 Petunia will glad Petunia will gladly assist him in that to offer him. Yeah, Hopeless. all I got was a nine. Okay, so dice. You, there's so much blood here; it's gross. Eh. Uh, <laughs> dice gets a little grossed out. Petunia comes in, just shoves her snout get, in there. Just I get my hands all red, and as she's going through it, I kind of look back, uh, see if Bud's not looking. I kind of wipe my hands off on Petunia. 
<laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Bud's yeah. off picking up uh, somewhere. I, I will. I will <laughs> allow one more attempt here. Uh, <clears throat> a single person. Um, I, I oh. guess I will if everybody. Well, we we oh, had two oh, other people like up there. The we, had, we we had two other people up there. So it was Mad Max and Petunia. So one of you decide who's. Oh who's no no, no. Make go ahead, Max go Max go ahead and give it a, a, a second. No, my investigation is awful. <laughs> Petunia's <laughs> is a minus several. So just oh, okay. Oh really? Okay. Well, <laughs> just good. just roll with it. Okay. It's a. Uh... Oh wait, hang wait. Is my do I still have my bardic inspiration? <laughs> up to gabe um yeah. that, it was 10 minutes uh, i mean uh, did we so climb a mountain no. in 10 minutes <laughs> you, yeah you do not have it i'm sorry right, uh, however with a 13 uh you rifle through his belongings and his satchel his backpack that seemed to hold many 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 things uh is there uh, additionally additionally he has a very fine suit of armor uh, with these tiny little uh, etched language uh, rune-like objects around all of the seams uh, of leather, studded leather armor. Uh, and he has a small uh, in a, a holster on his hip uh, with the leather flap over it, very circa 1940s. Uh, he has a contraption that he pulls out and it unfolds into a hand crossbow. And there are this very similar little etched lines along it, uh, <clears throat> this fancy writing that you can't make out. Uh, additionally, you find a cloak, a very, very finely made, very soft cloak. Uh, uh, some other mundane items shoved within the bag and his whip on his hip. Okay, so that, uh, that sleight of hand roll was to take off my like tattered and nasty smelly cloak and swap it with his okay you <laughs> now have a cloak of billowing oh yes <laughs> fantastic this is like my favorite common uh magic is, item is that ever that, it's is, so is that, good is, i like, love it you can just I, make I, bellow I, right with my bonus action now <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you have <laughs> yes you have bonus action economy You're in the middle of combat cast firebolt and billow Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it just needs it it needs to be the um cloak of pop collar it's oh just like, no 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 in, no 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 you in stop. the interest in the interest of time what we find here is a hand crossbow plus one a studded leather armor plus one uh a cloak of billowing uh, and a whole bunch of mundane items and a bag of holding. Um, I wanted to, I was specifically, I was looking for like notes or like something, some kind of, any kind of writing about the, his studies here. I kind of go, I go over Matt's, uh, Max's shoulder. I'm like, um, what you got there, partner? What's, what, what's that crossbow there? Well, <laughs> do, you, do you want me? I don't, it's not, not my thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take I'm like pointing it directly at you. I have no trigger discipline. My hand is on the, my fingers on the trigger. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! I, I take it like he's a toddler with a toy. <laughs> okay, so uh, crossbow, hand crossbow plus one, studded leather armor plus one, cloak of billowing, bag of holding, plethora of mundane items, tons of food. Uh, disseminate those how you will. Uh, obviously. Uh, Dice took the hand crossbow. Uh, I took the building. I have no use for the armor. Uh, and I, if no one objects, I'll sling the, the pack over my back as well, the bag of holding. Would anybody like the armor? Uh, Bud will will uh, lean down as, as Petunia uh, like deftly removes the armor from uh, the corpse. Uh, she'll shrug Bud off and like point to her own and then point to it and point to bud and um uh, but she's like oh my god a gift from petunia and he will say it's he still will, bloody oh yeah. but he does not care <laughs> does not care at all like okay. the the breastplate's uh, like stuck to his face as he's pulling it in, down it's terrible the, but he is in, doing it in the interest of of uh generosity and all such things um you all we can equip and attune to the items and what would you like to do? 
Was there anything else on him? Uh, like any information whatsoever? Nothing on him. I'm going to go into the cavern a bit and uh, try and no. look around and see what we've got going on. I go to stop Grandma Greca. And I say, remember what, uh, remember what the dingus said? He said, um, he said there's an armored guy in there that killed this old man. Hey, you know what? You can go. Just, just go. We'll be there in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Grand Amy. Uh, as you go in, you find uh, laying on the ground, open and kind of discarded as if it was dropped, a leather uh, um, uh, missive case. So it's a, a case rolled up with a parchment on the inside and a long silken ribbon and a metal seal on the bottom of it and a big dip of wax holding it together. Very formal, very fancy. Um, so, uh, Bud remembers him hugging a bow and a quiver that were not listed off amidst all of this, right? You are correct. Uh, and that is a mistake on my part. Uh, the orc took okay. it with him. Okay. All good. I, Bud was just going to go search in the pack. Um, but... The orc took it with him. Right on. I, I apologize for missing that beat on the way out. All good. So, uh, Grandma Gracka, you find this uh, missive rolled up in this fine leather. Uh, and Dice was right behind you, so. Uh, just a question. How long did it take for us to get up this mountain? Uh, we'll say 45 minutes. Okay. So I'm still in dire wolf form at this point. I'm going to pick up the the scroll and then I'm going to take it over to and uh, Dire Wolf looks very confused for a second as to as it looks at each th each of the three of you not knowing who to give this to <laughs> does like a head cock Petunia just stand forward. just stands up on her back's legs and goes. Hey, man. I think you should give it to someone that can read. Uh, we clarified earlier in the day, Bud actually doesn't read very well. Petunia is the reader, so Petunia <laughs> pulls down the scroll. And what you read. A missive to all adventurers, any who would seek the call. The Lord of Norton's rest seeks the heart of Norton. Bring it to him, and he shall pay you a king's ransom. Uh, Petunia will turn to Bud and do this. And Bud goes, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And comes up, and he touches the, the fancy armor on her and uh, casts um, Speak with Animals through the armor. And um, there comes Catherine Hepburn again. <laughs> but she, she says, My dearest Bud, we must go on and seek out the heart. Others are already on the move. We must find them. We must stop them. We need this heart. Go now, my Bud. Onward! <laughs> and she, she grabs Bud. And heads up the mountain. Okay. Uh, so you are at the top of the mountain. This is the peak. <laughs> but it yeah, makes sense. Listen, she, listen she's smart, on. but she's not that smart. <laughs> <laughs> I love the cackling in the background. I just look at, I just look at, um, I just look at Max. And go, oh, where's she going? <laughs> 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 she she runs off this way, realizes the oh we we are at the top, and she turns back around, and just goes. Do you run off with the missive, or do you just drop? Uh, it she she's go. got the missive. She throws butt on her back, runs up, and then just kind of sheepishly comes back and just looks at everybody. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's what Bud hears <laughs> all the time, <laughs> and he's so inspired. So uh, this cavern lies before you, uh, stretching back a hundred feet. Uh, and this huge, like, 20, 30 feet across stone plinth with a statue of an angel. 
I stare into this cave dumbstruck, and I just smack the wolf on the butt and go, Get him, Granny! (laughs) (laughs) As soon as I feel that, as soon as I hear even a slap, it's going to be, Chunk! (laughs) Just... (laughs) Just snapping, you know, one of those warning, one of those like German Shepherd warning bites that still feel like a bite. They're just not meaning to hurt you. Mm-hmm. All right, roll the uh, That is a sixteen on the roll plus okay. uh, so four, we'll say just yeah, that, or plus five. Damage. That's a twenty-one. Um, Gabe, check your mic. Sorry, it was a little pulled a little uh, yeah. far away. Twenty-one will definitely hit uh, dice clay. Um, so with you're trying not to hurt him too hard, so just your strength bonus here. Yeah. Which so is what is going what is your be... strength bonus for a dire wolf? The dire wolf is. At... You know what? I never took down my uh, three. My okay. mocking sword. It's kind of still floating around me. <laughs> <laughs> will that beat a twenty-three? Though I don't think uh, your AC. No, goes up but it high. will insult her. <laughs> Have at it. You take three points of damage. Okay. From Grandmammy Gracca. Okay. As the statue lies before you and you argue amongst yourselves. And you hear from my sword. I would insult you, but Mother Nature has beaten me to the punch. <laughs> I love it. God. <laughs> so good. I would like to. So. I would like to thank um, Vicious Mockery Generator for all of my vicious mockeries this <laughs> tonight. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, uh, Mad Max, you wander in and uh, you see the blood smear beginning at the the uh, uh, statue plinth, but you also see their script upon the statue. Oh, uh, can I read it? Uh, it is in common. Okay. What do I read? I'm not reading it out loud. You read the angel of unity, the one who brought us together and now guards the heart. Here lies the guardian, Bo Jiden. <laughs> I was wondering where it was coming. Yes. All <laughs> hail the angel, Bo. <laughs> if this angel has 284 hit points, we are screwed. Um, (laughs) I I quit. (laughs) (laughs) I I, I would like to concede. (laughs) Uh, Can you can you put that somewhere where you can see it either in the chat or wherever? Uh, Yes. No, not. I can. Oh, I this, forgot. This who, NPC who brought to you by Davis Tassar. Is that who did that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he donated right after the uh, the announcement came across today, uh, under the name Two Eighty Four, and I was very confused who it was that posted until I tracked down the email address that was tied to it and. Oh, he got a copy of Tasha's. Good going, but yes, you did. All right. So forgive any spelling or or whatever there. Thank you. I'm just whipping it out here real quick. Hey. Um, Excuse me while I whip this out. (laughs) Can I make a... um, Still a family show. An arcana check to see if I know anything about this in my studies. Studies. Uh, Go ahead and make an arcana check as you're inspecting the statue 17 okay with a 17 um there is definitely some something about it there is an aura here uh the the energies about it feel strong and protective and defensive but there is an enchantment here that is incredibly powerful. You don't even have to have detect magic up to notice it once you start really focusing. And what does the statue look like one more time? It looks like an angel, wings 
unfurled at its back, sword, long sword, point down on a knee, extending out and holding a sphere. You get too close, it plays a night wish song. Head bowed. <clears throat> I, uh, I'm gonna look if back you really... inspect the body closely there are scripts holy scripture uh, all the way around it and there are in fact 284 lines of it so I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm just gonna step up to the statue I'm gonna look back at, at them and like kind of shrug and I say um, uh, hello um, holy angel Bo Jiden. Um we're we're here to um, to find our, our friends, our, our, our whelps. They were stolen from us, and we want to get into Norton's rest. And then I just look at it. Who among you feels worthy to bear the heart? Is this is this in my head, or can we all hear this? The sound echoes from all around you, sourceless. Uh, Bud does. <laughs> oh God! Oh me! Grand Emmy, I will <laughs> step Grand forward. Emmy. One who would claim their worth. Grand Emmy is going to uh, walk up and uh, walk before the statue and just sit. So I look at Grand Emmy as she like sits down, and I'm like, "Oh, what? Don't do you not want what? What we do? Kern's not here. Would to for him to go first? <laughs> the the we... wolf just looks at you. The wolf just looks at you, and goes. <sighs> Didn't we all agree? That's why and, we brought blood along. Uh, 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 Grand Emmy's going to go up and nudge the statue with her snoot. <laughs> Roll a strength saving throw. <clears throat> that is, as the wolf, a 16, I believe, but let me double check. Yeah, 16. You take eight points of force damage as you are launched backwards. Anyone immediately behind Grammy <clears throat> is knocked over as well, and you land prone at the entrance of the cavern. I don't, I don't know where she was. I don't know if I was directly behind her. And yeah, we'll call it good. Okay. Who um, among you claims their worth? Well, what I'm... right do you have to life itself? Bud, well, we... Bud kind of pops up and goes, I claim to be worthless. <laughs> no, no, we're not worthless. We, we're all heroes of the, of the wise ones. And we claim the, the holy relics of Cleo Cleo. And we got all the way here and we're going to save our, our whelps. Bring All forth right. your relics. Um, uh, but, down, like, but pulled will, a little orange ball out of my pouch. Bud will take out his as well, and Petunia. And as you do, as as you take these out, and you're you're rifling through your things, and you look down, and poo 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 poo, rolling up the hill. And into the cavern, as if it was trying to catch up, <laughs> is the little sphere that was left behind with Crun. <laughs> and it rolls all the way up to the base of the plinth and stops. Uh, seeing it roll up, Bud will toss his to the ground and uh, Petunia will uh, do the same. As you toss yours same. forward, it doesn't fall. It flies <laughs> forward and field this field of energy 
collects around it and it starts rotating around the statue itself. The color of your ball was what color? Bud's was blue, well, light blue, I think. Mine was orange. Grand Amy's was green. Yeah, um, Bud's was a light blue. Um, okay. So as Petunia's you throw it out, turquoise, I think. As you throw it out, and Petunia throws hers out, they both start orbiting around the statue, and the globe in the statue's hand starts pulsing back and forth between those colors. Um, I'm gonna pull out my red ball, standing behind Petunia and Bud. And I'm going to throw my red leather ball into the mix. Dice, uh, as you are standing there and you throw your ball, uh, you see uh, right next to Petunia and Bud from the force energy blasting Grand Amigraca back, the missive, um, the leather wrapped and, and ornately sealed missive. Already on it. Okay. Okay. Uh, everyone give me a perception check. <clears throat> 14. Okay. You got a strong five. <laughs> Actually, 15. My bad. 15. Okay. Uh, 15 for Petunia and 9 for Bud. Okay. Uh, Grand Amy, you see... Uh, him dice pick up the missive, look at it like he's reading it, shrug and drop it. I'm gonna go over and get, look at the missive. So you have read it. It was the the invitation oh, okay. for the, to to take the ball for a king's ransom, but dice seemed eh like he didn't care. So, these balls that you have thrown out begin floating and rotating in a circle around the statue. And with a, a, a grinding, clanking sound, the statue moves. And the guardian form of Bojiden rises. Oh boy. Prove your worth. Oh, that's not a good oh, sign. Oh, no. Roll initiative, everyone. No, oh, God. All right. Her, 20, 25 to 20. 20. Uh... That shows the calculation weird. Uh, that is a 20 for me. Okay. That is a 16 for me. For some reason, it did it twice. Oh, okay, no. So that came through really weird on my screen. Sorry, the 20 was Max's. Mine's 18. I apologize. Yeah, yes, mine was 20. It showed as mine there for a second, and then it, like everything it, caught up. It, it stacks things in the chat sometimes. It's weird. All right, uh, I've got dice at 16. Grand Amy. Uh, 18. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to make a decision on who goes first there. So the angel rises and declares, show your worth. And the sword tip touches the plinth. Before it, Show me still, what you got. <laughs> still holding out the orb, flashing all these different colors and being orbited by those small little spheres. And as the spear tip touches, I need everyone to roll a dexterity saving throw, please. Oh, oh boy. man. No. <laughs> Alright, this one is Buds. Oh, man, that was almost good. Dang it. I got an 11. Okay. I got an eight. <laughs> Mine was almost a, a 16 and then it rolled over. Oh, dang. Okay. 
Uh, good rolls on the, the dice roller this time for me. Uh, Bud got a 23, and Petunia's is a total of uh, 20. Okay, so this is a DC 15, save for half. Okay. So 11 points for anyone who failed under 15. Oh, holy cow. Six points of damage for anybody over 15. Okay. Uh, Max, you're up first. Uh, I need the best in back here to concentrate. Wait, uh, can we what's get a grid? A, what's that yes, uh, damage can. again? Uh, 11 points. Fail? 11 oh, points of well, damage as a radiant wave poof, blasts out from him. There you go. Thank you. All right, so I'm going 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And I say, I need to stand back here to concentrate. And then I flip my spell book, book open, I rip a page out, slap it on the ground, punch my hand through, and uh, earth and grasp uh, happens it again. And so okay. A big, uh, a big um, hand of earth and stone erupt in front of it. And it needs it to make not liking settling on this spot for some reason. Okay. Turn grid, turn grid, snap off. Uh, it needs to make a strength save. Okay, we can do that. Uh, strength saving throw twenty two. Yeah. Okay. So the hand erupts up. It doesn't take any damage, and uh, the hand's still there though. It's concentrating. So. There you go. All right. Uh, bonus action, Billow. No. Oh, obviously, yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank, you for, Thank you for reminding me. As a bonus action, my cloak billows out, even though there's no wind around. He's Dr. Wonderful. Really Strange. Bud and Petunia. Dr. Really Strange. Um, <laughs> all right. So, um, Petunia focuses for a moment. And uh, just momentarily, her paws glow a color, uh, a, a brief pale green, um, as uh, Longstrider is cast onto Petunia to increase her movement speed by yes. 10, which gives her, as she rears back, Bud falling off her back to his butt. Um, yes, thank you, Davis Tassar, for uh, catching the long paws joke. Um, as Petunia will run the 40 feet that she now has forward to make an attack on the Guardian Joe Biden. Bo Jiden, sorry. Okay, make a athletics check to climb the 10 feet up the plinth. Can my, can my earthen hand help her? <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome. So advantage on the roll? or Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, that's going to be, uh, 14. All right. You succeed. You make right. it all the way up. And she it turns will... into a little platform that she hops on. <laughs> <laughs> it's a platformer now. Do 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 do. Um, and that will be an 18 to hit. Uh, an 18 just hits. All right. Oh, oh no, guys. Uh, my, As my, the... my possum's about to punch the president elect. <laughs> uh, so that is going to be a total of eight points of slashing damage as she runs forward, running at a uh, decidedly faster speed than what you've seen her move previously, hopping off of Maximilian's uh, grasping hand and just uh, rearing up and tearing into the shins of Mr. Bo Jiden. Uh. Uh, 30 foot tall. Yeah, no big deal. Uh, statue. Petunia knows no fear. That's Bud correct. Knows, Bud knows That's much fear. Uh, so right. that will be the end of my turn. All right, Grand Amy. All right. Uh, can you get me uh, at your earliest leisure a dire wolf or get the dire wolf uh, populated in here somewhere? Uh, and it, I is am. It, is it not? I see it. it. I'm not seeing it. Just refresh. It might just not be loaded. That did it did to me earlier with uh, Nico, actually. Yeah, I I have oh. Grand Amy hidden and the Dire Wolf here. Hide two characters. Weird. Show two characters. There you go. Better. Hold on one second. I am refreshing just to. Technology. No, no G. Oh, okay. Yeah, there I am. There's me. There's the wolf. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I am 
Does anyone know a really quick way as a player to uh, reduce your HP without having to go into the character menu? I would say, but I don't ever play on Astral. I always yeah. DM. No, um, no. But not, if, not if, a it's, if it's linked to um, D and D Beyond, but their new feature, if you reduce the dire your wolf, is in... not. Oh, so yeah. just keep moving. Sure. That's in too the much. Of time. It's yeah. I, no, I'm I'm sorry. I'm just I'm yeah. That's all I was saying. Uh, so I'm going to run and leap up onto the plinth if I can. Okay, roll platform. an acrobatics check for me, or uh, excuse me, an athletics check to make the leap. Okay. That is a, a 17. Okay, you make it handily. Okay, and then I'm going to have two dice roll since I'm threatened pack tactics on this thing. Yeah, yeah. That is a that's a 19 on the roll. I assume that 19 hits. hits. Plus five. And I am going to roll my damage which is a I think it's that. Let me go ahead and roll it. That is All right, uh, five, six, seven, eight points of piercing damage, and uh, it needs to make a strength saving throw. Okay, uh, eight points of piercing damage, and as you latch in and try to shake it off to knock it prone, the statue does not move. Oh man, this thing's rock solid. Okay, uh, <clears throat> end of Grand Amy's turn. Dice, you're up. Um, since I took that really horrible hit, <laughs> I'm going to um, take a lesson, an actual first lesson from Grammy, and um, the be the better part of Valor, and <laughs> step back. And I am going to can I can I vicious mockery an angel? I guess I can. I don't know. Can you? <laughs> um, um, so I'm going to look at the angel in front of me and I'm going to cast Vicious Mockery even though it does not want to pull up okay spells oh. okay so that um, is a saving throw for him saving throw D, uh, wisdom 13 that should have popped up in okay and uh, I, look, I look at the angel and I say you know what that statue's so fat, if you sat on a dagger, it'd come out a longsword. And uh, he rolled a six for his saving throw. So, so he takes one point, one of, point of damage. Oh my and God. disadvantage on his next attack. <laughs> okay. Until uh, uh, Bonus action? Um, bonus action, healing word myself, please. <laughs> okay, do it. What do you tell yourself? To, to bolster your physical uh, uh, health. <laughs> you need to get away from these goblins. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing with your life? <laughs> what, what are you doing here? <laughs> All right. Uh, back to the top, it is the Guardian Bojiden's turn. Oh, boy. The Guardian raises his sword high and slashes down and as he does who is he who is he attacking uh as he does uh you all every single one of you see a slash of energy immediately before your eyes oh crap a, a 14 to hit everyone can i that misses use... both petunia and Bud, because both Noted. of us have ACs over 14 at this point. I have an AC of 16. Oh, well, 17, because I have the sword up. Okay. Is Grand Amy getting hit by this? Uh, let me uh, check. As a quick. dire wolf, yes. Can I use Shield yeah. Other in reaction to this attack, or no? Uh, Shield Other is. Uh, 
not a uh, real spell. That is something homebrewed from one of my campaigns. Oh, I just saw it and I was like, this is really cool. So can I not take that spell? <laughs> no, you cannot. It should say SIW after it. Um, yeah, that's from the Mountain not, Wounds campaign. If, yeah, oh, if not, allow there's me, an... Allow me to switch that spell, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, if you... Hit. If you uh, if a fourteen hits you, you take seven points of slashing damage. Okay, I take it. And as the light dissipates, you see the guardian Bojiden standing outside, materializing in a different place. Uh, back to the top, Max. It is your turn. Yeah. Um, okay. So he's behind me now. Crap. Uh, okay, so my hand once again is very far away from him, and he's <laughs> get him, Max. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, I pull my hand out of uh, the ground, pick up my spellbook, I slam it shut, and I'm casting Shatter. So uh, from from like the slam of the the pages slamming together, um, this like magical energy emanates out and is going to um, ripple. Uh, from from his center, it's like a twenty foot radius, ten foot radius. Okay, awesome. Uh, what kind of save is that? That is a con save. Constitution saving throw six. Cool. Okay, so he fails. I rolled a sixteen for damage, and hang on, a creature made of inorganic material such as stone, crystal, or metal has disadvantage. Oh, disadvantage on the saving throw. Okay, so he already failed. So that was 16 thunder damage. Okay. Uh, and then I billow my quote. Only 260 some odd more hit points to go, guys. Uh, and then I would like to uh, take a couple steps back behind this pillar here. Okay. What Does could that... go wrong? And I see cowardice runs amongst you. What makes you feel you are worthy of the heart? We don't. <laughs> I already <laughs> said I'm not. But, but in Petunia, <laughs> you're up. Um, literally at this at as he does this, Bud responds with that. I already said I'm not, and he will <laughs> shoot an arrow at the guardian. Part. All right. Um, <laughs> for a net twenty. Yes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Nice, nice. Roll uh, damage. Okay, let's see. Um, let's see. That is uh, 8 plus 4 is 12 points of damage. As he's just sitting there crying, it's the most dead-on shot he's had all day. Just yeah, yeah, straight yeah. exactly where it should go. He's barely even looking at what's happening. Again, awesome. nothing happening on purpose for Bud. Just terrible luck. Uh, so, uh, he fires the shot and then, uh, will likewise try and duck behind some rocks over here. Um, but, uh, Petunia takes a moment. The, um, up here, is this where the, the little orbs are rotating? No, that is his earthen grasp. Oh, okay. Um, okay, well. The orbs are rotating around him. The orbs are rotating around him. Um, yes. Is there anything like of note that seems to be happening with them, or do they just uh, seem to be something that activated him? They are all glowing, uh, a pure white, and the orb in his hand that has remained outstretched the entire time is pulsing back and forth between all of the colors. Okay. Um... Since it was a nat 20 for buds, can we say that his arrow struck his orb? Sure. Did anything happen? No, sir. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, so not noticing anything of immediate um, ability to do anything with it, uh, Petunia will move and dash. Uh, her full 80 feet, so 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, putting her back up close to the Guardian Bojiden, but not able to do anything further. And that will be the end of my turn. All right. Uh, Grand Amy, you are up. 
Dice, you are on deck. Okay. So, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 40, 45, 50. Um, uh, what the hell? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Actually, I'm going to stay right here. Take the dodge action. Okay. Currently. All right. Dice, you're up. Okay, so um, I'm going to... I'm going to move valiantly 30 feet back here. <laughs> and I'm going to cast... Um, let's see. Oh, no, no, no. That's, that's not even... Um, close enough but okay so i will eldritch blast <laughs> the um the god <laughs> the angel of unity <laughs> that's a uh let's see why didn't it pull up why didn't you pull up okay uh yeah. that should have uh, that's a 10 to hit. I doubt that hits. That does not hit. Okay, then I will look at Bud, and I will give him Bardic Inspiration. And I'll say, don't worry, little buddy. They'll kill Petunia first. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> Bud goes into a frenzy. Uh, uh, Bud would like to rage. <laughs> uh, uh, Bud, Bud has advantage on his next attack. <laughs> uh, so, mechanic, I am gifting that. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, so, Bud uh, becomes the mince fairy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, bad. Uh, well, back to the top. It is the guardian Bojiden's turn. Oh no! Petunia. Once again, the long sword comes high and slashes down. Oh, guys. Uh-oh. Uh, oh, guys. <laughs> it's gonna hurt. That's gonna hurt real bad. Uh, <laughs> I'm in danger. <laughs> um, so I would like. Sword. I would like to take this time to remind those that if you donate fifty dollars to us, that buys us all a full heal to max. I think we're about we to need it. Thank our, you. We, we you you may or may not have some banked, and it may or may not be necessary here as he we rolls have, a natural twenty. Oh, he has so with his natural twenty and slashing down, everyone takes forty oh. points oh, oh, no. of damage. How does death, how does insta death work? Uh, so, uh, that slash comes down and all of you drop. And there's um, this moment. Oh, Petunia's dead, dead. Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask. I think I might be too. <laughs> well, y'all just shut up. <laughs> Give me a minute. <laughs> Grand Amy, you go all the way through your dire wolf. How many hit points does your main character have? One, One hit point. After forty. Okay. <laughs> Everyone blacks your vision. All you see is this slash across your vision, and you go black. Grand Emmy, you remain wounded and injured, hurting both your pride and your soul, watching your children fall as the guardian Bojiden returns to their plinth. What do you do? Now, hold on just a second. You don't come and smite us all down and keep me from my webs and just walk away. No, sir. And I'm just going to kind of keep going towards the plinth. The... You kind of waddle your way over there. The old old lady shuffle with your walking stick. Yeah. And the orbs orbiting the guardian all flash brighter and brighter and brighter. I see there is one amongst you who may be worthy. And the lights flash 
all of the orbs vanish. And the orb in his hand solidifies into a white, red, green, orange, and blue sphere. And the guardian kneels down and holds out the sphere. Everyone else, you swear you are on the journey to the great goblin castle in the sky where shinies are aplenty and raw meat runs like gold. Even me? This is weird. <laughs> and, then, and then you see Grand Dammy Gracca in your mind waddling her way an out of body experience waddling her way over and you look back at your corpse as it draws breath <gasps> and everyone wakes up fully healed thank you very much for your donations for ringing our party back from the brink Grenami <sighs> you are fully healed as well uh, it is currently Dice's turn as Grand Amy just acted. You're muted, Bill. Are we still being attacked? The Guardian is on one knee with the sphere extended out. I, I'm going to start like crab walking backwards. <laughs> <laughs> okay. His turn. Uh, are you spending your entire turn doing that? Yes, and I will dash that way. <laughs> okay, you <laughs> dash. You dash out of the cave. I want to I want to snag him as he's walking by me. So Max, it is your turn. Okay. <laughs> the uh, guardian does not act on his initiative. Does Andy get like does Andy come back? Or Andy <laughs> in in a flash of insight. Uh Max is like Oi, prick, it's the, it's the angel of unity. Get over here. And then I cast Gust to knack, uh, knock uh, <laughs> dice back towards us um, as I step up with Grand Amy. <laughs> unity, my left foot. That's an easy angel of death. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Bud and Petunia. Uh, Bud, uh, gets up and just immediately runs to Petunia. Oh, Petunia, I thought you were gone forever! And Petunia just, just like, grabs him by the nape, picks him up, and drags him back in <laughs> with her, just... <laughs> uh, sets him down, Bud's crying. Um, Petunia will, uh, observe the guardian, Bo Jiden. Um, okay. Grand Dammy. I'm gonna try and touch, reach out and touch the sphere. As you touch the sphere, it rocks in his hand like a ball would. It is not light and fluffy by any means, but it does move in his hand. His hand outstretched and the ball will roll in it. And with a bit of energy... Yeah, can I... You can lift it up. And it actually shrinks. As you lift it up, it... into about the size of a basketball. Guys, this seems like it's the perfect size for catapult. <laughs> <laughs> Ding! Just send it out there. It'd be great at, great at <laughs> wizard concerts. <laughs> and slowly, slowly as you hold this sphere, you hear and feel within it Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. You're about to be a band solo. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> As you hold within your hands the heart of Norton. All of us? Woo! <sighs> well, it's not. I think we've done it. And in wonder and amazement, the party collects itself. It rifles through Indiana Gnome's corpse one more time, just to be sure. Finds an extra little snack that you hadn't found before. And departs the sanctuary of the guardian Bojiden as he rests in internment for his <laughs> lifetime 
of unity and peace and equal rights for all. Oh. I'm going and... to give Indiana Gnome a Tibetan sky funeral. I'll throw him off the cliff. <laughs> Can, can I help and cast catapult? So. You can. You can. <laughs> and, and so and that's when and that's when uh, Dice and Max became best friends. <laughs> yes. So did we just become best venture, friends? Jump. <laughs> so as you venture back down the mountain, finding your way back to. Uh, there we go. Finding your way back to the, the clearing down at the bottom. The sun begins to set, and you find your friend, uh, your friend Dinguish there, set up with a campfire. Bow that Gabriel forgot leaning against the corner, and he just shrugs and points at it. You're welcome to take it if you want. Uh, and you all look around. Okay, this is. We did good. We we did good. We accomplished something. And the, as the sphere sets on a rock, as you all look at it, wow, we can do this. We can sneak into Norton's rest and find our way there. And you turn back to Dinguish and uh, it looks pretty good to me, but uh, where is he going? And oh, no. you look, turn back. What What's he talking about? And you turn back, and the sphere's gone, as is dice. And that is where we're going to end our session. <laughs> All right. Oh, man. <laughs> well, Bud will most definitely go over and check out this bow that was uh, such hey, a uh, prized hey, possession. Merry Christmas for a plus one longbow. Sweet. I forgot about it as we were going. Oh, this is garbage? Right, David, to start, get out of here. <laughs> so, uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, any donations made throughout this session? Uh, mm -hmm. No, wait, that was the last copy of Tasha's? No, we no, go, uh, yeah. we go we through the break. More. So, any, um... any donations made during this session and through the break will enter you in a contest to win a physical or a digital copy of Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Uh, we will be back here in a few minutes. Thank you so much, everybody, for participating. The chat has been delightful and hilarious throughout this. Like a million inside jokes from all of our different gaming groups. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So much fun. Uh, well, Dice Man stole the Unity, and so we'll have to figure out how to deal with that going forward. Uh, the uh, dice man cometh. For the those, dice man away. giveth away. For those that <laughs> stick with us for the last session that yeah. uh, that Bill will be leading for us, uh, there will be one more uh, individual map giveaway. Uh, we don't have another bundle to give off, but uh, there will be another map giveaway then. Uh, so stick with us for free stuff. Uh, and it's been a blast, guys. Uh, it's been super fun, and uh, we're looking forward just, to seeing this to a conclusion with all of you. Just, just keep just in mind. This is fitting because the dice always screws the players. That, that's accurate. <laughs> that, that is absolutely accurate. Uh, thank you, everybody in the channel. Uh, please, any donations go towards Norton Children's. Uh, we're just a couple hundred bucks away from our updated goal uh, of 2000 for the day. Uh, you're all wonderful players. You guys are awesome. I appreciate you very much. And we'll be back in about 45 minutes, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. We off stream yet?